remember to actually start the recording today and switch us to the screen. So, ladies and gentlemen, and everything between, welcome everyone to a very special session of Star Trek Adventures. Today, I have the immense pleasure of bringing you what could be what I'm hoping is my most uh, ambitious and best crossover event I've run to date. Uh, today, I have with me players from Ophion, Arcadia, and Adiona, and we also have NPCs from the games as well. You will also hear from the crew of the Lysithia and the Nightingale. We're packed in pretty tonight. Uh, we're packed in uh, pretty tight tonight. So let's go over some quick items uh, before I begin the session proper. So first, I have to give a big shout out to uh, Jamie Takahashi on DeviantArt. They were behind the initial creation of the ship frame we will be using in tonight's session, as well as some of the branding you see now on the stream. Uh, we also are using some art from Falk 2009 and Bobby 2 for our maps, and a few models from Star Trek Online for our tokens. Second, uh, it is worth pointing out that we have a lot of people here tonight, and we've got about three-ish hours to play. Uh, if need be, we can run over, but my hope is to finish up the main sort of adventure uh, by 10 o'clock, so that all of you wishing to watch Critical Role can not have to worry about a conflict of interest here. Uh, but we'll see what happens. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So tonight's tale, we begin on the USS Lysithia. Captain Beckett, you and your crew are taking a much-deserved layover at Deep Space Daedalus after returning from your two-year journey into the Andromeda Galaxy. While the rest of your crew celebrates, you're currently in your ready room reviewing a request from Starfleet Command to meet with Captain Williams of the USS Adiona. The Adiona and her crew will be heading through Pandora's Gate on their own mission in the Andromeda Galaxy and could use some tips from someone who's actually been there. But before you can really start to compile your monologue and your notes for this meeting, you feel a sensation, a sensation similar to being that of being transported. Moments later, you materialize in the transporter room of an unknown vessel. And let me switch maps. Looking around Beckett, you see that you are not alone. Senior Chief Hylong, Ensign Kairano, and Lieutenant Sfarja are there with you, looking just as confused. You also note that there are distinct Starfleet designs present throughout the room, and uh, judging by the fact that there's also a green-skinned woman in front of you in a Starfleet uniform, you're probably on a Starfleet ship. But as you look around and you get your bearings, the woman in front of you says, Welcome to the year 20, er, 2410, Captain. There's quite a bit to discuss, but most of it's going to have to wait until the others arrive. If you could just step off the pad and follow the crewman here, we can get the ball rolling. And you're free to talk. Uh, Beckett will look to Hylong and Svarja and kind of crack a smile seeing the green-skinned, probably Orion woman in front of him and say, no, no, no. Don't kill that one. Let's hear them out first. And then he'll kind of motion for them to go in front of him. Ladies. All right. So they begin to uh, filter out to one of the waiting crewmen. Uh, it's worth noting that Tivna is wearing a 2360 uh, uniform. So pre-DS9. Uh, the crewman, though, that is sort of just waiting to take you guys wherever. Uh, he is wearing an STO style uniform. Gotcha. Um, so what I was issued for the Lysithia, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, Becca, when he walks past, um, uh, the crewman in the older uniform will just kind of like nod at her and go, you know, I really like those better than these ones and just continue to walk following the crewman. Very good. So, uh, the four of you are led off to a lounge. Well, cause the lounge is the biggest place on the ship that will accommodate you. And up next, materializing on the transporter pad, is going to be the Arcadia group. So, uh, Rear Admiral Tahan and Lieutenant Commander Janus, uh, you guys have just finished your layover uh, at, what was it, Starbase 2-something. Whatever, you know what Starbase I'm talking about. Um, you've just finished your labor layover at the Starbase, uh, yourself uh, on the Arcadia, and the Thunderchild or whatever we're calling the Thunderchild at this point, uh, have just begun to resume your patrol route among the or along the Dominion border. 
And it's just the two of you that materialize on the pad. And same kind of deal. You're seeing Starfleet trappings. You're seeing uh, a crewman in an STL-style uniform. But you're also seeing a very familiar face. Uh, you, uh, in particular, would recognize that the Orion woman is none other than Tivna. No words, just a tricorder comes up and covers my face and the screen pops out, and I'm just reading it. Okay. Uh, what are you looking for in particular? Um, anything outside of the, the norm. Um, also checking for hologram. All right. And again, apologies if jet noise bleeds through, but uh, yeah, you run a tricorder scan, and as far as you're able to tell, uh, this is real. This is not a hologram. You can confirm that uh, you are no longer where you once were, whatever you may have been doing. Uh, you have been transported somewhere that the tricorder's like, hey, it's got a Class M atmosphere, so you got that going for you. Uh, Janice looks around. I'm just going to kind of... Let's do Janice first. Uh, I'll just heal turn... Uh, pivot. Okay, yeah. Uh, does the area look like more advanced than our uh, normal or our ship's transport area? Yes. So I tried to find a very sleek looking uh, interface, and this was the best thing I could find. It's very streamlined. Uh, it looks very futuristic. And you would guess that this is definitely something from the future just based on the amount of blue blinking lights, because that's how you gauge what something is from the future, is blue blinking lights. I lean into the Admiral's ear and go, they know about me. They're looking for their new captain. Don't worry, sir. I'll remember where I came from. <laughs> we had our shields up, right? Uh, yeah, you would have been on patrol, so yeah, your shields would have been up. Oh, no, I was asking Janice. Oh, go ahead, sorry. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, our normal uh, shields we would have up during transit, but uh, enough to sh stop most transporters. I'll turn back to Tivna. Um, Tivna, an explanation, please? Well, perhaps reintroductions are in order, Captain. I am Tivna, FTA. No... She sort of just raises an eyebrow at the no. I think I understand. Janice, we're going to need a drink. I'm always down with a drink, sir. Well, uh, Admiral... Don't worry, it'll be something cold. Yeah. Well, uh, Admiral Lieutenant Commander, uh, if you'll follow the crewman here, he'll see to it that you get whatever drink is your preference. Is this your ship, Agent? Mm, I'll go over that in a little bit, but let's just say yes. I am the ranking officer aboard. Well, technically, since you're you, you know what I mean. You're you're the admiral here, but all that will be answered in due time. Well, if it's the year you say it is, I hope it's good to see you. Uh, and you see that uh, her face kind of hardens a little bit, and she does sigh, and she says, "Yeah, I'll go over that too." But uh, please, gentlemen, if you would, we have another group coming in. Of course, of course. So you guys uh, get let off as well. And up next, we have the pleasure of the Ophion group coming in. So the Ophion group, uh, you guys are probably about, we'll say, three months since your whole promotion ceremony. So three months since your last mission or your last session, however you want to qualify it. Uh, so coming with you, uh, Rear Admiral Skull, is Lieutenant Commander Locke, the recently promoted uh, Captain Panek, uh, the new Ensign Zenixia, and you also have Lieutenant Junior Grade Sona there as well. And as before, uh, when you teleport in, you see everything that I've described up to this point. Oh, we must be in the future. Look at all that lens flare. <laughs> Why Commander. is it every time... Right. Yes. Oh. Why is it every time I sit down to have a nice cup of tea, I get inadvertently beamed into another timeline? Hopefully, Commander, this is not another incident that you've happened upon on the bridge. This isn't some sort of R&D mishap going wrong, is it? 
I, I take no responsibility for this whatsoever. Visual data, Admiral, would indicate that we are upon a we are on board a Federation vessel or a close approximation of such, if my memory serves. However, I believe this young lady we met aboard uh, a certain star base. I can't remember where it was now. Uh, it was like Warden or something. Uh, bucket station is what I keep calling it. I have missed your detailed analysis, Captain. It's good to see you guys. If only the such situation wasn't so weird. Anyways, Miss Tivna, was it? Yes, I am Agent Tivna, FTA, and I'm glad that you could make it today. Not that you really had a choice, but okay, I need to work on my humor. Note to self, find time for humor. Uh, anyway, uh, if you gentlemen would follow the crewmen here, uh, we already have a very large group of people aboard. Uh, I just need to bring in one further group of individuals, and then I can get all of you together and get a, ah, begin the briefing. Uh, go ahead. So, sorry, FTA? I'm unfamiliar with that acronym. Well, at least you didn't make a joke about it being Ferengi in origin. Uh, the FTA stands for the Federation Temporal Agency. I'm going to need some painkillers for this. I believe there's some department of temporal affairs. I, I believe some paperwork will be in your future, Admiral. I'm an admiral. That is literally my entire job now, Captain. Anyways, miss, please lead the way. As we are let out, I want to happenstancely brush skin to skin with Tivna to see what I can pick up through touch telepathy. Uh, sure. Go ahead and roll me. Hey, first roll of the night. Uh, go ahead and roll me a uh, insight, and uh, let's make it a con. Insight con difficulty two. I do not have my sheet working. I just have bio and info and an export and overwrite. Uh -oh. I thought I fixed everything. Well, let's fix that real fast. I uh, should have looked at that sooner. Do, 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 do. There you go. You should have added permissions. What was that roll again? Uh, Insight Con. Difficulty 2. And this is how we can uh, hopefully start getting momentum for you guys. Hey, look at that. You guys start off with the momentum. Very nice. So what you're going to pick up from Tivna is that she's very guarded. Uh, she has received some form of mental training uh, to prevent sort of, I would say, empaths or telepaths or even mind melds, perhaps. Um, but what you would get is there is a sense of anxiety about her. Uh, she is, of course, happy to see that so far, everyone she's expecting to show up is, but there's something going on that is making her tremendously anxious. As we're led away, I'll lean in and let the Admiral know of my um, discovery. All right. I'll nod silently. And then, the final group. Uh, so this time, uh, for you guys on the Adiona... Uh, you guys have just finished your senior staff meeting where Havoc was telling Morgan uh, off for not stealing designs for the Muat ship. And for those of you on the Thunderchild, so Captain Crowley, Crowley, uh, kind of the same thing with the Arcadia. You have probably just sat down in your ready room for what could be the first time. And Bryn, you on the Nightingale... Uh, have just finished a long shift, and it's then that all of you appear on the pad. And again, you see futuristic uh, transport room, and you see Tivno there waiting for you. I look at Commander Morgan and say, All right, what did you do this time? I promise you, this time, it wasn't me. Oh. At least I think it wasn't me. I'm just going to look at their pips. Mm -hmm. Look at both of their uniforms and look around. Put the book I have in my hand and take off my little reading glasses. Put them in my pocket. I was like, who are you two? Lieutenant Commander Havoc. And this is the... Well, this is Commander Morgan. I'm not going to say much more than that. I'll look over to Brendan and notice his pips. Okay. I was reading a good book. Uh, 
If no. Yes, command or captain is it now? Congratulations. Wait, Thank you. you. Wait, you know this person? I know. I don't you. know you, but uh, mind explaining what's going on? Is there a directive involved in this, Tivna? I will be covering that in the briefing as soon as I get you all situated in the lounge. Uh, if you would follow me, I can take you there now. And I can start to answer many of the questions that you have. I want to ping everyone for feelings. Okay. Uh, let's have you roll a uh, Insight Con difficulty one. Okay. Yeah, uh, either you're just overwhelmed by the fact that you're somewhere you didn't expect to be, or maybe it's a, an effect of being transported 20, 30 years into your future. Who knows? I'm going to put the book down on one of the, one of the tables here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll wander with Divna. And I'm, I'm going to look at both of the two other individuals. A chip. Uh, 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 sorry, you go, go first. No, go, no, no, by all means, go ahead. Whoever's the senior rank, what chip? Oh, Adiona. <laughs> Morgan is taken aback because he's done so much time traveling recently. So this time, he's actually getting caught off guard because it's a situation that he knows he didn't prepare for. So he's going to ask to a bunch of techno babble. And she's gonna, he's going to ask her, well, if that's the case, and if we really are out of place, how exactly did you reconfigure the tachyon variants for the transporting stabilizer? Well, we just subverted the quantum resonance scanners, and from there it was pretty, pretty much, uh, oh, what's the human expression, like a hot knife through butter? I'm pretty sure I read a paper on that once when I was at Memory Alpha, but I guarantee you that theory was, would never be able to be put into practice for as quickly as you. Well, you're here now, aren't you? And she kind of winks at you. <laughs> I take a look at Morgan, put my hand on his shoulder and say, all right, explain what you were talking about in simple terms. I think it's best that we not pry any information from the future, temporal prime directive and such. I'm... We're, believe me, I've had my brush with the Temporal Prime Directive. And at that point, I'm just going to make my way off the pad myself. Because this time I don't want to be, I don't want to be the cause for this issue. All right. Well, uh, I'm, I'm actually asking questions. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's, let's cut to the meat of this. Why did you drag us here? And why did you go through the whole entire problem of violating the, pr the Temporal Prime Directive just to bring us and wait did you bring anyone else uh actually i've brought quite a few and that question will be answered during my briefing but we're here and by now uh you guys everyone has assembled in the lounge i know there's literally no room on this map to see the lounge itself but everyone <laughs> is here everyone present uh you guys can take your seats kind of filter into groups if you so wish uh whatever you guys need to feel comfortable uh, the main thing is that once all of you have taken a seat and quieted down, uh, Tivna sort of whistles to get everyone's attention and says, All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you for joining me here. Uh, let's just go ahead and get into it. Computer, if you would run briefing program Tivna Alpha 3, please. And the computer chimes, the lights dim, and above all your heads, a holographic display begins to uh, illuminate and play. And Tivna begins her briefing, and I'm going to deliberately pause during her briefing so that you guys can ask questions. Um, but if you want to interject at any point, just, you know, type asterisks in chat, and I'll try to be mindful of them. Uh, so what she does is she starts off by saying, uh, as ironic as it is to be limited on time, I will get straight to the point. In your futures, there is an ongoing war with the Iconians. Well, I kind of call it a war, but really it's more like a hopeless last stand. Projections are that Seoul will fall within weeks, and with it, the Federation and the Greater Alliance will fall. In our hour of need, we have turned to the Krenum and their temporal weaponry. The FTA has gathered you all here for a single purpose, 
In approximately 26 hours' time, the Iconians will transition their Dyson Sphere from its position in the Andromeda Galaxy back to the Iconia system. You will be in charge of stopping that transition from happening. By doing so, it will de delay the Iconians' deployment of their amassed force and will give the Resistance time to come up with a means to end this war once and for all. And she pauses here. If no. Yes. You pulled us from different points in time. I did. What, ha what happens if we die here? Well, the good news is that you will not truly die if you perish here. It's getting into the weeds of temporal mechanics, but suffice to say, if you perish here, your normal timelines will not be affected. But should you survive long enough that we can reintegrate you, you will remember everything that happens here. And oh. uh, let's see. So I'm just going to go off of uh, who was next. So I think next is Beckett. Uh, first, a question. Um, how is this uh, Dyson Sphere getting from the Andromeda Galaxy to, uh, to the Milky Way? Are they using Pandora's Gate? They are not using Pandora's Gate. That's the good news. The bad news is they are using Iconian Gateway technology on a scale much greater than Pandora's Gate. But I will cover that in a moment. All right. Uh, up next, I believe we have Tahan. Well, I think you've already started answering some of my questions when you mentioned gateways. You're talking about the extinct Iconians, or at least... They are extinct to my understanding. Let's just say there's what we believe all of 12 of them, and they are about to wipe out the Alpha Quadrant. So not so extinct as we might have hoped. 12 individuals will be doing this? Correct. Well, they're also supported by heralds and constructs, but the main people in charge, there's only 12 of them. And the Krenum, I'm not familiar with this either, but there are allies. Oh, right. Uh, long story short, uh, you're, you're aware of Voyager, yes? Uh, yeah, it went missing years ago. Let's just say they didn't go missing, but without ruining your knowledge of future events, let's just say they run into the Krenum and things happen. Okay. Uh, that is all I have for now. All right. Uh, let's see. So I covered Panek, covered Tahan. Up next is Panek. What you got, Panek? Uh, Captain Tijon seems to have asked some of my questions, although it is my understanding that from the Voyager logs that they ran it, the Voyager had some complications with the Krenum, and they were not air allies at that point. I assume something has changed, and you mentioned an alliance. Could you elaborate on that? Well, the long and short of it is, is that pretty much everyone in the Alpha and Beta Quadrants, we're talking Klingons, Romulans, Cardassians, hell, the Breen, literally anyone who has any stake in their empire surviving the Iconian Massacre. Really, it would be better to call it the Iconian Genocide. Uh, we've, we've all bonded together in the single purpose of defeating the Iconians. Uh, second question, if I may. Of course. It is also my understanding that a Dyson Sphere is a tremendous mega-civilization undertaking. And you are asking these individuals here to stall its movement. Are we being given resources and supplies to do this? Uh, yes. In fact, you are standing in your most crucial asset right now. This is the USS Avenger. It is a prototype vessel designed by the Resistance... And we believe it is our best chance of you guys disrupting the beacon. We will need... I, I can't speak for others, but I will need a schematic and some... Any manuals you have on the operations of this vessel in order to efficiently utilize its capabilities. Of course, of course. All that will be provided in due time. Uh, oh, uh, let's see. Captain Crowley, is it? I believe you were next. Uh, I'm just gonna pretend to like ask her some questions, but while I'm doing so, I'm sending a mental image to Tahan. Okay, what are you telling Tahan? 
Just a rainy afternoon. Just rain coming down, and I'm waiting for a response from him. Uh, I think for a second, and um, rather than focusing on the briefing in front of me, the the clouds part, and then there's a sunflower that turns toward the, the breaking in the clouds. Crowley will just pause for a second. It's like, okay, well, I believe her. Right. And Timna takes one last look around for any would-be questions. Mm, Cap well, Commander Morgan raises his hand. Uh, Commander Morgan, go ahead. So, this is a check that I want to do. You mentioned that if this is actually the 29th century, and you're throwing out all these terms uh, that I would, I honestly s still find quite incredulous. I mean, I could understand the Iconians, but... I mean, the Federation losing this war, and you mentioned a resistance. And worth telling is the fact that you pulled us all out of some place in time. And I really, are we that expendable? Or do you, do you not necessarily, do you find that your only solution is actually to look to the crews of Starfleet in the past? I, I doubt, I really do doubt reintegration of our of our own personal timelines as possible. And if I can make that like an insight science check, I'd appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, sure. Uh, let's do a uh, insight science difficulty two. Sure. All right. So, you know, you, you know temporal mechanics, uh, but a lot of the things she's talking about are out of your wheelhouse because no one no one's really gotten into the nitty-gritty of time travel at least in a way that you know is comprehensible if that makes any sense um but to answer your statement tiffna says a few things uh first off uh this is the 25th century we are using 25th century uh time travel technology and the reason why we have picked all of you is because our projections indicate that you are the best at what you do. Now, of course, if you would like to opt out of this little exercise, the last hope that the Alpha and Beta Quadrants have at surviving, I will be more than happy to send you back to your current time with no knowledge of this event, but we really need you. I, I would be remiss in saying that I would prefer it if uh, everyone could cooperate and get along here. I, I, as I said, we've specifically picked all of you because we believe you to be the best for the job. Suck it, Picard. I hate temporal mechanics. I don't know why I study that so hard. It's nothing but trouble. I took a take a look at Commander Morgan. All right, you got. You made a deal with a Q a while back. This is completely within your realm of things. You've you would do. Come on. Spoilers. I have not completely ruled out that this is an elaborate ruse by Captain Penek, uh, um, Beckett. Not Penek, I'm Penek. Well, uh, Tivnus uh, kind of smiles herself and says, let me finish the briefing and then you all can mingle. Uh, as I said, uh, this vessel, the USS Avenger around you, will be your main asset in destroying this beacon. And I'm going to show you this map early, don't freak out, but this is what you're going to see in hologram terms. So uh, as you get a look at this map, uh, let me zoom out for those on stream. So you should see uh, two asteroid belts, you should see some sort of energy sphere in the middle, and some Iconian ships. And... Uh, Tivna goes on to explain. The core of our attack will be on this sh shielded installation here near the Iconia system. It is guarded by Herald forces, which you and this ship will have to punch through to reach. As I've said, this ship is outfitted with the best anti-Iconian weaponry the Alliance has to offer. And, as I have said, each of you has been handpicked for your skill set and experience. But, again, it would be remiss of me to say that... <sighs> Chance of victory here is slim. It's going to take a small miracle to pull this off. And again, the good news is, if you die here, you need not worry about your immortal soul. The only time and only way you'll really remember any of this is if you survive long enough for 
us to reintegrate you with your past counterparts. And she pauses again, sees if uh, sees if there's any questions. <clears throat> uh, Pernick will kind of motion. Go for it. I believe there is a human affectation applicable here. There are too many food prepare, uh, preparers in the domicile. You are asking quite a large crew of senior ranking officers to pilot one ship. Is there not other resources available to us? So Tivna actually kind of points at uh, Commander Morgan and says, well, let's take Commander Morgan here, for example. Sure, he's good at diplomacy. He's rather good at balancing out, uh, what's the cam- captain's name? Uh, captain Williams. But he also has knowledge of temporal mechanics. And among all of you, I think he might be the leading expert on temporal mechanics. And then uh, she points at, uh, points at Bryn. Dr. Bryn here has done excellent work in the field of medicine during his career in Starfleet. And I believe is a perfect counterpart to our good Captain Beckett here. And last I checked, Beckett still has his medical license. Uh, you, that that okay. is correct. And whoever takes over the ship, I just want to let you all know that at any given time, Bren or I decide that you're not acting the way you should, we will relieve you. And Beckett gets the biggest shit-eating grin on his face and just kind of winks at Skull. He will do it. I have been at his mercy. I think that's a fabulous idea. Definitely uh, more forward than that hologram we have. (laughs) Agent Tibna and Mr. Morgan here have brought up some good points in regards to temporal mechanics. You clearly have the ability to, in the future, I would assume that you have the ability to send agents to the past. Why is it that you have not returned to the crux event of this uh, war and prevented it from happening? So, Tivna, there, there's, a, there's a definite pause there. She's trying to formulate how to say this without spoiling events. Uh, and she finally settles on... I believe it would be best to say that we are still trying to determine what the initial catalyst for all this was. The Iconians have had their hands in, shall we say, many different pies over the years. And it was not one particular thing, as far as we're aware, that caused all of this. It is a series of events that cannot be easily changed. We're still looking into it. Time travel and time manipulation is a rather monumental task, but... At the moment, we believe our best course of action is to try and stop the initial transportation of the Dyson Sphere. And after that, as much as I hate to make the pun, we will have time to work with. I see your skill of obfuscation has not diminished with time, Agent. Well, I wouldn't have shown up in all of your... your, ah, I would not have shown up in all of your timelines had I not felt that you could handle this. Anyways, last part of this briefing, and then it'll be a smorgasbord. We're not really able to get a clear reading of what lies within this shielded area, but our best guess is that it's a sort of a Class M world or a planetoid that is powering the beacon. We don't know what is powering the beacon, only that it's sending out a very powerful signal past the quantum barrier towards the Andromeda galaxy. And, again, at whatever the cost... This beacon must be shut down. And at this point, she sort of uh, sighs once more. Uh, The lights in the lounge come up, and she says, Well, that's all I had. I'm free to answer any questions you might have, but as I said, we've got 26 hours before we've got to begin this operation. Um, Beckett asks one last question. Sure. Do we have time for you to send me back so I can get some supplies and come back? And I wink at Skull again. If you're referring to your liquor stash, no, but we do have a full stocked bar here in the lounge. I'll, I'll, I'll make do.
Well, uh, with that, I will be taking at least some of you on a tour of the ship. And uh, she kind of motions at a few people. Uh, if anyone wants to go on the tour, uh, you can. But this is kind of me beginning to break up the group so that it's not like 80 of you at once. Um, so anyone who wants to go on the tour, just sort of shout in some way, shape, or form. And I'll kind of put you off to the right of the map. And anyone who wants to stay and mingle with other people, just don't say anything, I guess. So uh, I wanna who, would, who would like to go? I'd like to have a quick face-to-face uh, -face with Tahan before okay. decisions. Yeah, go for it. You guys can chat. Go for it. I'll go up, shake his hand. Rear Admiral Tahan, it's an honor to meet you. Uh, Admiral, Bar Admiral Barton Skull. I apologize. I don't have the pleasure of knowing you uh, yet. I, I suspect I'm from your future, but if the mission sounds tactical, your records indicate you're far more tactically inclined than I am. So I'm not going to figure out who's got more seniority. I will cede command of the operation to you. I appreciate that. I was considering whether or not a uh, chain of command should follow those from most in the future or least um, due to the amount of information that could get spread. But I suppose if those from furthest in the past have the least ability to uh, ruin future events for those around them. Um, I'm just referring to your... Uh, you haven't had them yet, but your escapades during the Dominion War made for very interesting reading. Thank you. I will I will take your compliment. Um, but that still lies ahead of me. That said, we need to establish a chain of command. Um, obviously, standard ranks will do well. Um, breaking those ties, I believe those from furthest in the past should have at least some say over those from furthest in the future. Just so that uh, we do not leak information, as I've already mentioned. Uh, begging uh, both of the admirals' pardon, can I make a suggestion? Please. Uh, I, I completely understand chain of command, but can we do away with calling each other by our ranks? Seeing how there's two rear admirals, three captains, two commanders, and three lieutenant commanders, so calling someone captain is probably going to elicit more than one response. That sounds fair. Agreed. You have it. Not Captain Beckett. Uh, I Second and I'll look. I'll look to Bryn, and I'm sure my medical counterpart here will uh, say the same thing. And uh, doctor will suffice. Wait, Bryn, you didn't come with us. Oh, um, I yeah, I, thought... I served with you a long time ago. Yeah, I thought you looked much worse than usual. Hmm. So, just too bad you didn't make it into my time. Oh, yeah. I mean, was that too much? <laughs> and then I walk off. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm, I'm a Beckett will sense what Bren just said, put his arm around the Tellarite and say, hey, you know, why don't we go see how big the sick bay is on the ship and uh, we'll... Uh, yeah, how about we go do that? And he'll kind of look at Sparja and kind of give her the nod, like, come on, let's get out of the room. Right. Um, but before he leaves, he'll look at Tahan and say, and also, if you need a good doctor, I've heard there's a very good one on the USS Hope. Excellent surgeon. Really good. And then he'll walk out of the room. <laughs> All right. I'll keep it under advisement. Uh, Skull, I believe if we're going to be leading this mission, we should understand our ship well. Agreed. Please uh, lead the way, Miss Tivna. All right. So I put you guys in there. Uh, that just leaves Locke, Crowley, Janice, Panek, and Morgan. What are you guys doing? Oh, I'm looking at Morgan. Okay. <laughs> uh, Janice wants to check out the bridge and where he can start pushing some buttons to get used to flying. All right. Let's uh, let's have you go on the Tivna tour then, Mister Locke. 
I think Tiv and the tour is uh, getting a little crowded, so I'll just stay inside the... This is a, a little overwhelming. I'm, I'm just going to stay here and uh, decompress. Maybe find a bag to breathe in. Very well. I will try the workings of our ship. You will stay here and manage relations with our would-be crew. Hi, Captain. Well, I think Morgan's immediately going to turn to the nearest uh, wall panel just to try to get information about what exactly were the events that led up to this point from a diplomatic point of view, even though it doesn't necessarily seem like that would be the... That's the course of action we're about to take. He at least wants to find solace that we at least attempted to... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, as you pull that up, let me just answer that for Beckett. Uh, yeah, if you guys want to keep our ping, interrupt me. Please feel free. Um, I'm just trying to sort of segregate it out so it's a little bit easier for you guys to role play. So it's not like eight of you trying to talk all at once. Got it. Um, but to answer your question, Morgan. So how familiar, out of character, how familiar are you with the Iconian War in Star Trek Online? Zero. Okay. So the TLDR is that the events that lead up to the Iconian War go all the way back to that first episode of TNG, which I can't remember the name of off the top of my head. Um, but it's the one where they... Uh, it's... Oh, what is it? It's the one where Data gets corrupted and Picard goes down to the planet and it's an Iconian gateway. And there's the Romulan ship in orbit as well. Contagion? Yeah, I think it's Contagion. Um... But yeah, that's the very first instance of the Iconians going, hey, there's people back in the Milky Way. Um, and it sort of leads up from there. So everything from that point forward, so the Dominion War, they had their eyes on. Um, they had their eyes on the eventual breaking of the Kittimer Accords again. Um, they were responsible for the Undine, or Species 8472, uh, the war uh, with them, they instigated it. Basically, they are the boogeyman in the closet for Star Trek Online. Everything is the Iconian's fault. Gotcha, gotcha. And that would be about the level of information you'd get back from the wall panel. Um, I want to go to a wall panel, too. Sure, you join him at uh, his neighbor wall panel. I start typing in information on Ensign Carruthers. Mm -hmm. Before I press enter, just stand there for a moment, just just thinking. Sigh. I was like, ah, Temple Prime Directive, right? And I clear it off, and I just look around at who's left, and I'm starting to I'm starting to look at Havoc really closely. Okay. Not... Uh, while you do that, uh, Hi Long, seeing what you just did is actually going to kind of slip past you and push the enter button. And it's your choice whether you want to look at the information that's displayed to her or not. I just turn and look at her. I was like, I'd rather find out and be boots on the ground, High Long. I want to be boots on the ground and I find out then, not, not cheat. Very well. I won't tell you what uh, the computer has just told me. And she keeps as, as neutral as a face as possible. Could be good, could be bad. I'm an empath. <laughs> This is true. So she stays I'm, neutral. I'm going to fight Reen her. <laughs> All right. Uh, roll me, because again, this is good momentum. Uh, roll me an insight con and give me a difficulty two, please. Uh, I did not read her. Can I use composure? Yeah, sure. I'll let composure apply here. Yeah, so, again, either because time travel has messed with your innate abilities or High Long is just a little bit harder to read, um, it's important to note that this High Long is not your High Long. She is from the Lysithia High Long. So this is her right before she gets promoted to Master Chief and joins up with the, the Gamma Vanguard. Okay. Um, just going to look at her for a second. Like, older? Indeed. I'm glad you noticed. Does the, okay. uh, well, I guess he's Rear Admiral now. Does he still have my sword? Yes, I think he sleeps with it every night. He sings to it, too. Tucks it in, has its own bed, reads to it. 
That is simply adorable. You wouldn't happen it to have is. any hollow images of that, would you? I'll work on it. How about that? I look forward to it. All right. Years. I I'm going to give I'm going to give the strange looks after hearing about that with a sword. So Hylon looks uh, over at you Havoc and says, "Oh, uh I don't know how much you know about Serato Draco, but uh yeah, we have this whole thing with swords and commanding officers." And you sleep with a sword. I mean, I personally don't, but apparently Tahan does. Crowley's going to look at Havoc, and he's not happy looking at her. You got a problem. Borg? Unfortunately, yes. How far in the future are you? Far enough. You're telling me that we're going to start working with the Borg? Not exactly, but again, do you really want to know? At that point, Morgan is going to interrupt him saying, Is there a problem? Yeah. The Borg destroyed my ship at Wolf 359. Well, Havoc is a member of my crew, and my chief engineer. So, I suggest that you, uh, you get your head in The machines speak to me. And it is right about then that uh, Beckett, as per request, he and Bryn walk back in. Almost like they forgot something. Uh, Beckett will walk in mid-sentence of, All right, I, I, I give up. I can't find damn sick bay on this thing. Uh, but walking in and hearing the tail end of that uh, exchange, uh, Beckett will stare at Crowley. And uh, I know Commander Morgan can handle himself, but if you have a problem talking to anybody who's going into or out of Andromeda, you can talk to me. And if you have a problem with any member of any crew that goes in or out of Andromeda, you can bring it to me. Which I suggest you don't do. Let's look at Havoc for a while. Why are you different? What do you mean? Says, says the man in the Federation. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What do you mean, why am I different? You're Borg. You yes. think you'd be trying to assimilate all of us? No. So my question is, why are you different? Something about getting abducted by the Borg at 17, turned into one of them, have the uh, place where I was transformed, exploded, and then slowly but painfully having most of my unnecessary implants removed kind of does that to a Borg. You're saying people long-term assimilation? I missed half of that. Sorry, you cut out. You're saying that people can recover after long-term assimilation? Do you really want to know? You're walking proof of it, so I guess I already do. Care to hear some more proof about that, Crowley? And who are you? Oh, my name's Captain Michael Beckett, Captain Lysithia. Oh. I'm also one of the doctors that helped along the process of turning people back from being Borg. So yes, it can happen. Yes, it's a very painful process. Well then, Chief Havoc, I apologize. None needed. I got that for years after I was converted back. Hey, Crowley. This has been some time has passed, but for me, I still have nanites in my system. So. Hmm. Well, just make sure to keep those things out of control. I've seen someone go into relapse. It's not pretty. Uh, I never needed to know that. <laughs> I definitely don't want to be sprouting some components. Literally. That's awful. Let me introduce myself. I'm Kalos Crowley. Captain of the Torchbearer. Fine class. Actually, a ship designed to attack the Borg. Oddly enough. And he'll hold out a hand. I specifically take the hand with my human hand. Which is my right hand. 
Oh, man, right, well, go shake it. Like, so, you had something for me, Morgan? I'm just saying, if we live long enough through this, I'm, maybe you guys could swap specs. <laughs> I managed to be lucky in my, my assimilation. Uh, the Vulcan doctor did try his best to kill me, but Andromeda, a <laughs> friend of ours, mine... Mm. Wait, um, you know Andromeda? Yes, she actually saved my life. In a very major way. Uh, I have her nanites coursing within me too. It's a weird mixture. Immediately, the glowing eye comes on. Do I have to worry now? Is this when I have to be afraid? No, no, no. That just comes on when I actually uh, n when I hear something that I actually am very, very interested in. Let's just leave it at. Which would explain why I was off for the rest of the conversation with you, Crowley. <laughs> hey, Bren. You just took oh. command of the torchbearer. Yep. How's the, the wife and Beckett. kids? I lean over to Beckett. He doesn't make it either. <laughs> How's the wife and kids, Bren? Right, you're single because no one can love you. I'm kidding. I like just I goes, All right, gentlemen, I love the shade that's being thrown here. But if we can just keep our dicks in our pants for the moment, I think we have bigger fish to fry. Hi, Long, I love Bren. Yes, he I know. Says, you can have your bromance later. I go over and uh, I give Bren a hug. I give him a big hug. It's good to see you, Crowley, but no touching. I thought what you said the other night. Come on. Let's go find out to other crews. That is inappropriate. <laughs> and uh, at being there's hugging going on uh, Beckett will walk over to Locke and uh, kind of take him by the shoulders and uh, you know that that uh, third pip looks uh, looks very fitting thank you uh, you're from my future it's hard to keep track uh, yeah I would be from your future but I'm still the same Beckett um, and uh I, if I were you, from from what I know, uh, I would um, get used to a lot of scratches. I, I don't know what you mean. Mm. Yes. Um, Cations. Mm. Vulcan I hearing. I just raise an eyebrow, very Vulcan style. <laughs> oh, dear. All right, well, so that we don't leave the other guys uh, out for too long. So I'm just going to flash us through a few maps. If you find one you're interested in, shout. Uh, so I think the first tour that uh, would be, and I would say that all of you would eventually get the same information. Um, it's just that the people who are actually on the tour will get this first. Um, so the first stop is actually just going to be engineering. So in engineering, uh, it is a very different looking warp core than any of you are really used to. Um, it is purple in color, which is a definite departure from the usual Starfleet sort of blue and black. Um, it's also a very compact looking drive uh, to begin with. And I would say that you're normally expecting, I would say maybe what is it, four or five decks worth of warp core? This is compressed into all of maybe two or three, so it's it's very impressive looking. And uh, if no one has any questions, I'll move along. Uh, okay. Pinek will oh. ask what the top maximum warp factor is, and any specs on the uh, design of the warp field around the ship. Well, uh, Captain Panek, I'm, and this is Tivna talking, I'm happy to report that our top speed is warp 9.9975, can, uh, can be held for approximately 12 hours before we need to take a break. We're also outfitted with QSD and transwarp technology. So you've got some bells and whistles, but it seems to me you still can't outpace the Ophion in a marathon. She looks at you with a very wry smile and says, Maybe when all this is all said and done, we can try and actually have a race. I'm pretty sure that the Warp 10 barrier will always be unbreachable, especially if Janeway's uh, reports were accurate. I think at this point it's a 
Starfleet warp technology is more about long-term endurance rather than how fast can Indeed, with QSD and uh, transwarp, we generally keep warp for uh, sustained flight or normal, and she air quotes, normal travel between stars. If we really need to get anywhere, we just sort of fire up transwarp and pop where we need to go. So then why are we unable just to pop into the middle of this thing, blow this planet to pieces and pop out? Well, long story short, let's just say every time we've tried to extend the transwarp network towards Iconia, something goes wrong or parts of it blow up. We now know why, but uh, let's just say it hasn't been an easy process. Um, sorry, I have a question. Curious here. Sure. I assume we have something similar or more advanced than the war the variable warp pylons my ship uses. Oh, well, you're in for a treat then. And uh, she goes over to one of the panels and she shows you a diagram of the USS Avenger, which I'm trying to find where I put it here. I guess I only really have the top down here, so I'll, I'll blow up the token. But um, that is basically what the Avenger looks like. Um, the sort of aerodynamic fins you see on the warp nacelles uh, swoop up and to the back, and there's also a pair on the bottom that swoop down into the back. Uh, it is a very sleek, and I hate to keep using the word futuristic, but futuristic design. Which character is showing this to me? Uh, this would be Tivna. Hmm. Uh, Tivna, are you familiar with my um, Kobayashi Maru test? I believe one of the higher-ups did uh, include that in his calculations about whether or not you would be allowed. Uh, I can't say I'm personally familiar with it, though. I, on my second attempt, I tried something the technology of the time could not handle. I, I wanted to name it the Tahan Maneuver. It would have used a uh, incredibly precise warp field calculations to redeflect incoming energy and torpedo attacks back towards their uh, the attackers. I'm curious if the technology here could be capable of such a thing. And uh, she, gets a big old, she gets a big old smile and says, actually, you've actually gotten to my second talking point. And uh, the hologram she's showing you kind of, I, I guess you would say fizzles around the ship to show that there's a shield there. And she goes on to say, this vessel has a very special set of shield arrays. And let's just say that something similar to what your idea is, if I understand what it is properly, something very similar. Hmm. I'm, yeah, I'm, no doubt other technologies would be more efficient and feasible. This... Well, we have time for tactical drills before... I know we have limited time. She looks at the clock and says, yeah, you've got about 24 hours, uh, 24 and a half hours. If you want to run tactical drills, that's on you. I think we'll need to. But uh, please continue. I was merely curious. At the mention of tactical drills, uh, Panek steps slightly closer to the, the Admiral. And he doesn't quite, there's like a hint of a smile in his eyes. All right. So other big notes, uh, they do show you sickbay, but I wasn't able to find a very, you know, sickbay map that I liked because really the only futuristic ones are the ones on Ophion. So if you really want a map that you want to look at, just remember the Ophion uh, sickbay map. Uh, it's very Spartan, though. I would say it's maybe a little bit bigger than a Defiant class is. Uh, it still looks like it's got some upgraded tech, but it's definitely Spartan. Um... Up next, uh, she does show you the captain's ready room, uh, which, you know, you guys can fight over at whatever point you decide is necessary. Uh, she then shows you the auxiliary conference room. Again, you can use at uh, your pleasure. Uh, and then there is the bridge. And I think, I think by the time we get to the bridge, uh, she would have gotten or at least wrangled everyone back together. So this is the bridge of the Avenger. And let me just get everyone's token on screen and I can keep on talking. So, no. uh, oh, go ahead. Narrative. 
narratively, mm-hmm. if she's going to wrangle us all to the bridge, Morgan wants to play with a site to site transporter. Oh, sure. Uh, so I want to materialize onto the bridge. Let's see. I have to remind myself with transporters. Do, 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 do. Uh, yeah, if you want to roll me a control engineering, difficulty two, and if someone wants to get the Avengers sensors engineering, uh, difficulty here is going to be a three. And roll for the ship. No, I think, Crowley, you just volunteered to roll. Uh, I was, I was volatil- telling Janice to do it. <laughs> oh. You've got my token on there twice. I do? Uh, I do, yes. One of you is Commander Panek. Commander Panek is not here. That's a crazy transporter accident, man. There's two of you. I'm not complaining. I I knew reintegration wasn't possible. (laughs) You might have Uh, set Beckett, though. So, uh, Janice, you're rolling a sensors engineering, please. Hey, you get the three successes you need. So as all of you start to filter in... Oh, I guess Milan's not here yet either. Um, as all of you start to filter in and check out the stations, uh, Morgan, you literally beam right into the middle of the bridge. Hello, crew. Well, good to know. Uh, I could uh, fiddle with these transporters. Useful skills. I do like a man who can make a good entrance. Slowly Stick around. The, the Admiral? Like, what? What console am I at? Yeah, so let me describe a little bit of that a character about all the, the, the consoles here. So, um, the Ford 3 consoles are actually used not just for navigation, but for uh, sensor data as well. Um, in a pinch, where you're seated currently, Crowley can be taking over for the con position if the main con blows out for whatever reason not foreshadowing at all uh sona and kairano are the other two con npcs so you guys are good like if someone goes down in con you've got backups uh where janice is uh janice you are at the primary helm uh next to you is Hylong. Hylong is at ops uh lock where you are that is the primary science station uh, where Panek is, is you are at Ops number two. Uh, Svarja in the back is at Tactical. Uh, where Tivna's token is, is Tactical two. Uh, the other side of the bridge is Tactical three. And then you have the lone chair in the middle, where someone's going to have to sit. And then you pretty much have other chairs uh, around the place. The only other chair of note is this one here. Uh, and it is science two. It would appear this is standard federation configuration. We have access to all relevant systems. Yep, yeah, I'm wrong. Question, um, Tivna. Yes. I did not notice any other individuals on this ship as we were doing the tour. Is that correct, ELH? Yes, that is correct. Are we? Are I'm assuming then that we are going to be running this ship completely from the bridge for the most part. Well, I hate to say uh, you already know this, but you do know that the original Prometheus class was run by all of five people. Yes, I am uh, definitely aware of I that. I would like to interject. I believe it was four. Uh, Maybe you should five if you count the hologram, but technicalities. Uh, in any case, my point is, is that this ship is designed to run on what most would consider a skeleton crew. Besides all of you, myself, and two other crewmen, uh, this is it. Very well. So you plucked us all out of time and space to run a ship that could fly itself. <laughs> okay. I'm with it. Secretly, Morgan's not with it. Yeah, I don't think he's with it. He's so not with it. Uh, I'll turn to Tivna. Um, Tivna, you have the most knowledge of ev- the records of everyone here. Who among us has the best um, or most tactical experience? Well, uh, honestly, that would be a toss-up between yourself, Svarja, and Skull. 
All right. Well, I'd like either Sfarja and or Skull to run some tactical drills. I myself will be studying the Iconians for the time being. I believe that may come into play. Uh, 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 Beckett interrupts yes. and, and looks at Sfarja. Powered down weapons. You're never going to let that go, are you, Captain? Absolutely not. You shot the Ophion. But you commended me for it. In fact, I have the medal to the point... Stop, 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 stop. We are not talking about that part, okay? I'm I'm sorry. Commended? He raises an eyebrow and turns over his the shoulder of his chair to look at Beck. I'm sorry, you fired upon another Starfleet vessel? It was a sanctioned tactical drill that w one of us missed a parameter on. That's a Where Sparsha comes from is when they do war games and drills, they don't use powered down weapons or blunted weapons, they go full force. I may have forgotten to tell her to power down the weapons, and, uh, well, yeah, things happened. Anyways, um, I'm all... Svarja's tactical skills at... Uh, tactical outweigh my own. I am more than happy to stand at... Stand ready at the science station or take command in engineering if necessary. Uh, perhaps you can help me study the Iconians while the drills are run. I'd be it would be my pleasure, Tahan. All right, and um, anyone else uh, with particular knowledge of the Iconians or any background in cultural study, diplomacy? I have history. Uh, I'm next stands, and he's ha he has a uh, background in diplomacy. Well, Morgan takes the stage, and he says, well, in looking around the room, I think that would probably make me the closest thing we have to a... I'm sorry, to you a know. what? To a what? To a diplomat. Uh, mm, not really. <laughs> uh, you do not seem to possess the normal composure of diplomats that I'm used to. To be frank, Morgan, I think we're past diplomacy at this point. Perhaps, but we're not past negotiation. Um, Skull, if you could come with me uh, while the others run tactical drills. Um, however, I will open the floor now to further suggestions. Uh, I mean... If what I know about Dr. Brin is, well, is who he is, uh, between him and I, you probably have two of the best xenobiologists you're going to find. Um, we can try to run that route, see if it'll give us an edge in that way. Absolutely. You two are with me. Unless you have any objections to Dr. Brin? No. As oh. they leave, Pinek well, will approach the main... To... I, ha I have several objections, but none regarding this. Um, before we do that, I, I think Havoc, you wanted to ask Tivna something real quick, and then we'll go to Crowley. Uh, I actually shuffle over to Tivna and stay quiet, quietly, just not to get anyone else's attention. Uh, do we have any samples of their technology I can get the, my hands on? Uh, yes, you simply need to, uh, go down into Engineering Locker, I believe it's 6C. I nod and actually exit to go to that locker. Right. Zenixia follows you. Uh, Zenixia hasn't said a single word to you so far yet, Havoc, but uh, you can tell, uh, since you've never really seen a creature like her before, uh, she is wearing an Ensign's uniform, and uh, she seems very eager, just hasn't said a thing to you yet. Oh, um, uh, out of character-wise, I don't think you ever described what Zenixia or Cyrano look like. Yeah, I guess I probably should take a step back here and describe that for those who don't know. So Zenixia is basically a, uh, I, I hesitate to use the word bipedal because she actually has a snake tail, uh, but she is a bipedal uh, quad armed insects type species of uh, psychic in origin. So she picks up surface thoughts and knowledge and uses it and becomes very quick expert as long as you put them in a room with experts. Um, as far as Kyrano is concerned, uh, he is known as a Scorpi, which, as you probably guessed, means he has Scorpion features. So he's got a big old Scorpion body, uh, he's got an upper half of a, of a human, and uh, let's just say he takes up a lot of room. Uh, but for sake of argument, let's just say this bridge is enough to accommodate him. 
And everyone else, I think, is a quote-unquote normal species. Well, I guess Sparja is different. Uh, Sparja is from a species known as the Fryqua. Uh, they are basically humanoid in design uh, with big, long, pointed ears. Uh, they have sort of a braid of hair that falls behind them. Uh, but other than that, she's pretty much humanoid. Uh, nothing really that would stick out, especially compared to, like, Xenixia or Chirano. All right. Uh, up All next, right. I had Crowley, oh. I think. Uh, yeah, Crowley's going to go walk up to Tahan and uh, just lean in and like, can we talk for a moment? Uh, sure. Um, I'll turn back to Skull. I'll meet you in the captain's ready room. Uh, and then we'll just go out the opposite hallway, whichever one that is. Okay, sure. Actually, I tell you what, let's make this a little bit easier. Uh, let's say that you're meeting him in the ready room, and then everyone who's going to be working with you studying the Iconians will do that in the conference room. Yeah, that's better. Right. Just before the scene change, sure. uh, Pinek will go to the main chair, and getting down to business, will tell the, the bridge, begin readiness drills Omega-4, and then sit down. Alrighty. Noted. All right, so uh, Tahan and Crowley. There you guys go. Go for it. Well, this is interesting. Um, I've been in some strange situations, but I'll, I will say this one takes the cake. How are you holding up, Captain? I'm still not used to that, you know? But so we were, we were taken from the same time, then? We just had the commencement ceremony, but... Two weeks back, I started growing this beard. Oh. So. Yes, I, I, I definitely see it coming in. Yeah, it's, it's getting there. It's, it's looks, it, look, it, it, it looks good. Um, it is very hard being here right now. For the simple fact that I really want to find out what happened to Crothers. You but. just feel my heart plummet. I tried to look it up. Oh. Um, I didn't read the results, though. And I wanted to do the same. Let's not look into it. Let's avoid it. Because right now, he could be either alive or dead. And I'd rather not know. And if I don't know, that means we can change it. We can find him alive, hopefully. I don't want to know. So... Well, I'm Captain, asking you, asking you no not matter to look what, either. I think the point of today is we we might be changing some history. Unless I uh, unless I misunderstood Patevna. Yeah, this is going to be an interesting interesting conversation with her when we get back to our timeline, or she should be lying to us and tells us that you know. We're going to remember, but we actually don't. Oh, if she's making this up, I'll kill her. You want to know. That's the worst part. <laughs> just, just, just let me have this. But I promise you, I've not forgotten about Carruthers. We'll get him back. I'll... One battle at a time. Thankfully, this one won't. Not back then, at least. Well, we got a few hours left. Well, over 20 at least. I'm going to help the other Vulcan, Panek, right? I'm going to help him with some drills. All right. Did, uh, did Bryn told you you die? Yeah, yeah, he did. Glorious. <laughs> Uh, Torchbearer went up in flames, ran into the star. It was great. The star got sucked up by a black hole, too. I, I think he said I choked on a pretzel. Classical. It's a, it's a classic. I had to look up what a pretzel was. Alright, well, I have a meeting. Thank you, Captain. Admiral, and he'll walk back out and walk over to Pernect and wait forever. We have to get time to talk to him. Alright. 
Yeah, let's uh, let's do the bridge real fast uh, because I want to make sure everyone has at least semi similar talking time. Uh, so let's see. So Tahan, you're off. Uh, Havoc and Zenixia, you guys are in engineering. Uh, Panek, you are in the big chair at the moment. Uh, Beckett, if I understood correctly, you and Bryn are helping Tahan. So you guys are off screen as well. Uh, Morgan, you were helping as well, I believe, as was Skull. Let's move you over here. So I think that's everyone on the bridge who should be. Yeah. All right, go for it. Uh, we your your response time in that last row was 3.4 sec milliseconds slower. I'm going to need the rest of you to pick that up. Carlos is going to slowly turn around and raise an eyebrow at him. Uh, Sparger will chime in and, well, uh, uh, Captain Panek. Uh, if you would let me shoot as soon as I can, we would probably get through this quicker. I do not need a tactical officer with an itchy trigger figure, Swarja. You will shoot on command and only then. Uh, as you order, Captain. And she will mumble something about owing Beckett money. <laughs> uh, Helms Officer Janice. Yes, sir. So I need some information on the uh, Arconians from what we have available and how they like to attack and their patterns. Uh, think you can come up with a workaround? I can research the history so far of the battles that have been done and try to give you a better plan to execute, sir. Okay. Sure. And uh, Janice, let's make a roll of this. Uh, if you could roll me a reason plus con, and someone wants to get the ship for me, please. The ship is going to be rolling computers and con, and the overall difficulty here is a two. I'll get the ship. All right. I'm rolling bad tonight. I mean, at least they're not 20s, man. That's true. Get them out of the way now. Don't need to blow the ship up before we get there. 16, G 17, jeez. GM, evasive yeah, action? Um, I would say that this would be... Yeah, I could say evasive action as a focus could apply here, because you're trying to figure out how to evade things. Well, I, I also have shipboard tactical systems that might... Uh, yeah, I, I would say they both apply here. All right, you guys get another momentum. Good job, Janice. Uh, so, Janice, what you are actually able to realize, uh, probably no thanks to the computer... Uh, but what you realize is that the Iconians seem to have the habit of, at least their smaller ships, are able to create an instantaneous portal and sort of attack the ship from behind. So if you're flying one way, if you're flying at them, what will happen is they'll open up these portals and then suddenly they'll be a few kilometers behind you where you're the weakest and they basically unload everything. Um, for their larger ships, you realize that they are able to sort of create portals into suns and cause almost a blast of solar uh, fury, if you will, uh, almost like a directed solar flare. Um, I'm thinking if you would get anything else. Yeah, with that many successes, I think maneuver. that's what you got. Um. Okay, so then I share this information with the bridge, uh, the bridge crew. Tactically, we could infer that the Iconians rely almost predominantly on their advanced technology. I believe we can use this against them, using more conventional tactics that they will not be anticipating. I agree with that, but, uh, if no. Yes. The Sovereign class operates off of bioneural gel networks uh, throughout the ship to grant the computer something called fuzzy logic. Is that still a thing? Well, we use something a bit more advanced than a viral neural gel pack, but the concept is the same. Are we able to take in hell command inputs tied to the computer, so the computer then has control over the shields to reinforce weakest points if the Iconians want to pop up, let's say, behind us? Well, uh, as 
I don't think you were here for that part of the tour, but uh, we do have very special shielding. Uh, we actually haven't gotten it to this point in the drill yet, so Captain Panek, if you would care to run through drill uh, 69, 7, Charlie 2, uh, I can show you all how the shield array works. Very well. Reset the simulation, Crowley. And GM. Reset the simulation. Yeah, what's up, Janice? Did the information tell me if these portals were one-way only? Uh, no, they are two-way. Very well. All right. So as... Uh, as this whole simulation begins to run and uh, you guys start to see how uh, reactive the shields are, uh, Locke, I actually would like you to roll me a reason and science, please. Uh, the difficulty here will be number two. In regards to what, for focus purposes? Uh, this would be in regards to uh, force field technology, deflector output, shield technology, anything along those lines. Not quite what a spy could do, but you got it. All right. Not quite nice. my wheelhouse, but uh, I can hold my own. So what you uh, what you determine, Locke, is uh, so there's out of character. There's already a special characteristic slash talents uh, handout uh, above the ship, but what you realize, uh, Locke, is that there is actually potential here to overload the shield array in a positive way. Um, it's something you're just theorizing in your head, but you think if you spend four power in mechanic terms you could double the effective challenge dice roll. So basically, you could amplify what is already being done. Uh, captains. That sounds weird, captains. Uh, I, I postulate if we, we have the power of the shields, if we really focus the power and command the fighter dish, we should be able to greatly increase the output of the shields. Sounds like a good plan. Panek will stand up and walk behind Locke to look over his work. Uh, Commander, I want you to run simulations uh, to determine whether or not the EPS systems can handle this overload. I want to catch any faults or problems before they happen. Hi, sir. I'll also see, run the numbers to see if we can withstand a uh, barrage from a sun if we need because that seems to be an issue. Uh, who are the other science officers on the bridge right now? Uh, right now, I think, actually, it's just Locke and Hylong. So Hylong, I think, would kind of look at the same data that Locke is and say, uh, yeah, I mean, the the idea is crazy, but, you know, we're kind of crazy officers. Uh, I don't think uh, our engineers are going to be happy about the power draw, but I, yeah, I think it'd work. Commander, if you will, if you have access to this information on the computer, I believe if you look back to the logs of the Enterprise D, there was tests done of a shielding to protect against the corona of a star. Could you possibly modulate our shield frequency to mimic this? I think that's you, Locke. Yeah, I was just trying to find the episode so I could reference things. But no, Google who has failed me. To, not, I'm not there's there. a the, Ferengi uh, involved. Yeah, there's a Ferengi, a Klingon, a um, someone else, I forget. Uh, some other oh, alien. That yeah, I, I remember the episode. I just wanted to drop a proper name. But... The priest and a rabbi? <laughs> they all walk into the sick bay. I don't I, recall I... the uh, individuals involved directly. Um, Captain. I'm sorry, I'm so easy calling you commander. Uh, but... Maybe, although I haven't fully looked at the specifications of the shield, the, the, that kind of modification might already be, be standard issue in this, the shielding of the shield. Well, I leave it into your capable hands, Commander, and I walk back to the chair. All right. Chief Hylong? Yeah, what's up, Crowley? The data we have on their dimension jumping. Is there any particles, radiation we can flood the area that would harm it, make it unstable for them to go through, uh, any way to slow them down, or make it a hazard for them? 
uh, one moment, and uh, she runs some calculations of her own. And I'm just going to say she comes back and says, uh, Well, uh, as I'm sure others are finding out, it seems that the Tholians are chroniton-based life forms, so if we were to flood the area with enough chronotons, it might do something. Tholians or Iconians? Oh, sorry. Uh, Iconians. <laughs> Wrong enemy mix here. Up so many times. Uh, definitely the Iconians. You think we could... Hmm. A chroniton torpedo thing? A chroniton torpedo? Hmm. Uh, Sparja, what do you... Do you think we could modify some? Uh, I know I can modify a warhead. I would just need someone who's used to dealing with that kind of energy. But I can modify the warhead with anything you want in it. Uh, well, From... Hylong, uh, Hylong stands, not even waiting for the order, and says, uh, yeah, let's let's go figure out some Chronoton warheads then. Probably just gives a thumbs up. While they're working on that, I want to back up. A torpedo is a very directed weapon. Uh, Tivna, how many deflector dishes does this ship currently have? Uh, technically two, but the other one uh, that's not being used at the moment is sort of what's supporting our aerodynamic fins. Locke, I want you to begin looking into the process of uh, using the secondary deflector to emit a chroniton pulse. Just as a backup. It might possibly burn it out if we do such a thing, but I have options. Right, Captain, I'll look into the metaphasic shielding and then the chronoton pulse. Also, this ship is equipped with a slipstream drive. I wonder if we could use that to counter the Iconian portals in some way. If they both use the same kind of similar subspace technology, we could, instead of creating a quantum slipstream portal, we could cancel one out. So if we try to use portals around us, we could maybe you know, you know reverse the player. I have a horrible idea. An suggestion. I think Crowley has a horrible idea. I want to hear this horrible idea. I'm going to walk up and walk over to Tiffin and just lean down next to her. Aww. So I've just been briefed by Starfleet of a certain particle. Does that interfere with the Iconian travel? Honestly, I don't know. We kind of don't deal with that in the FTA. That That's a whole other department. The next uh, acute hearing will pick this up, and he will give Crowley a very stern look. I do not believe utilizing such a particle is it within the timeline's best interest. It causes irreparable damage to the fabric of space. Subspace, Captain. But, hey, we're, we've been brought to think outside the box. Yes, I can see that. Begin work, but only as a very last-ditch maneuver. I don't even believe we could ha we have the ability to generate such a particle. As far as I know, the Borg had trouble, even with their massive resources. True, but that was with an hour time. This is a bit later, but... Also, we should stop mentioning it with people that aren't captains. Yeah, at this, this point, other true. people on the bridge are like, what are they talking about? Uh, all right, well, at this point, uh, let's do one more scene, and then we'll take our break. So we're going to cut to the conference room, where the uh, big old Iconian think tank is going on. So at this point, uh, I'm just going to say you guys get four free questions before I make you start rolling for them. Uh, before we ask the questions, um, uh, Beckett will walk in with um, drinks. Uh, presumably beer, and then he will walk over to the replicator <clears throat> and replicate a couple bowls of pretzels. <laughs> <laughs> and set them down on the table, uh, sit down, and then start going over the pads, um, absentmindedly drinking on the beer and eating the pretzels. Gotcha. Help yourself to Han. Um, so... Uh, well, just... Oh, I, sorry. I'm going to give Bryn a huge death stare and just grab the <laughs> largest pretzel and just... I, I, but then, 
But then, then I look down at it, oh, and I crack it in half and just start eating it slowly. <laughs> Tahan, I want you to roll me a challenge die, please. As he has that like half second of breaking it, without even looking up, Beckett just kind of chuckles and goes, "Don't worry, there's two doctors here. We know how to do the Heimlich." You think that, but yeah, Tahan, roll me a challenge die, please. Just one. Both of, it Don't both of them got punching you. And this oh, is wait, how Skull to... takes command. <laughs> oh God, your token <laughs> even still says Captain. Let me fix that. All right, then. Yeah, mine, uh, mine still says Lieutenant Commander, also. Yeah, apparently some of the rank changes didn't carry over. All right, yeah, you're fine, Tahan. If you'd rolled an effect, you would have started choking, but you're fine. <laughs> um. So I've, I'm, I'm gathering this group so that we can pour through the cultural and biological data on the Iconians to see if there were any advantages that we can um, bring to light and devise a strategy around. However, I'm looking through the notes that the, um, the rest of our crew is sending us from the tactical drills, and I see one from my Helms officer about their use of portal weapons. It appears that these are two-way portals. If we can predict slightly before they open, we may be able to use this against them and fire our weapons back through their own portals. The Ophion has had some experience with the Tholian webway. Perhaps they, it would operate under a similar... Perhaps it could deploy a similar detection scheme. I'm intrigued. Um, what are our chances this, that this might... It's as good a chance as any, really. But at this point, we th at this point they've probably tried all the obvious things. They brought us in to try the unobvious. I'm hoping that they don't expect that. But um, perhaps our his like, I'm oh, sorry. Go on. Um, predicting the future, huh? And Beckett will just kind of turn I the skull. Oh, the chronotons! The chronotons! The chroniton sensors. I mean, we've got the per one of the two people that developed them on this ship right now. Do I know uh, the other even... person who developed them? I'll turn back and look. Oh yes, yes you do. Uh, seems you and I have uh, the same <laughs> taste in chief engineers. Without even bothering to ask, um, Skull to Highlong. Highlong here. Hi Long, how fast can you rig up a chroniton sensor array? And you hear her curse off screen like, he's a bloody fucking genius. Says, I can have it up and running in three hours time, sir. Do it. Take whoever you need. I think Xenixia has absorbed a lot of knowledge around the operations of those things, so she will be of great assistance. Great. I'll, uh, I'll also tap Havoc for this as well. In that case, Morgan's going to pipe up and actually say, so we're going to have it. Sorry, you cut out halfway through your awesome statement. I hope this doesn't keep happening. Mor I'm going to pipe up and say, Mor tap my combat and say, Morgan to Havoc. Did you say Morgan to Tahan? To nah, Havoc. Havoc. To Havoc. Ah. Yes. So I'm curious, is it possible for us to use the, QS, the experimental QSD on this ship to increase the time dilation effect of our weapons? You're asking me to... Oh, boy. Uh -huh. It's possible. Mind you, we may explode the process. How many calculations do you feel like it would take place that we that we would need to do beforehand while if we were to actually be engaged in combat to make sure these would be we would have our that the time displacement would be correct are we asking in days weeks months or years? minutes minutes <sighs> i'm actually gonna have to ask gm mm-hmm for something of that insanity, how many would we actually have to do? So, what we're going to do is that during the break, uh, I'm going to be figuring out some quick extended tasks, but basically, as long as you help Hylong out with her chronoton sensors, um, you would be able to do something like Morgan is asking. Well, oh, 
I would have to I would have to take a look at some other things, but maybe maybe take me a couple hours to get it done. Just to make sure that we don't turn into space dust. I think at least going forward, our operating principle should be similar to the catapult that we encountered the Muat with. Just on a more finely granulous. Uh, are we talking about the one that's already built or the one inside the timeline you remember? Both. And neither. What happened to my arm? Actually, what happened to me and the other one? That's a lot of spoilers that we're not focusing on right now. <laughs> my question is, is, can you get it? Yes, it is possible. Can you get it done without blowing yourself up? Yes. Alright, that is all I need to hear. Please get started. And, uh, and Beckett will chime up once that conversation's over. And as far as having something to do massive amounts of calculations in, the, in a split second, we do happen to have an android on board. I mean, you have your android, I have my chief Borg engineer. So I think we got our big. I, I think we're covered on the whole doing calculations at the speed of thought. Doctors. Um, I'm go I'm busy l rifling through pads. It says here that they believe that the Iconians are partially energy based. Can we somehow disrupt that energy, like a taser to a brain stem or something like that? Well, I was thinking not so much on those lines, but I was worrying that we were focusing so much on the ship that we weren't paying enough attention to what happens if we get boarded. And perhaps one of us should be looking into some sort of either biological or some sort of system weaknesses that they have that we can defend ourselves adequately against them if they get on board, or if we need to board them for that matter. Well, I mean, it's we could we have uh, certain emitters all over the ship that we could effectively use that taser idea anywhere that they would board the ship. Um, because if if Tivna is correct and the ship can be run by, well, like the Ophion or even my Lysithia, uh, run by holograms, we can use all those emitters. So. Uh, I'm going to give this to you free. This won't be part of your four questions. But, as someone in chat has pointed out, uh, the Iconians have a chroniton-based mind, which means that if you disrupt that, uh, whatever time frame they're in reverts to whatever the chroniton disruption effect uh, puts them in. So, for example, uh, if an Iconian travels from the future into the past, their mind reverts to that past state Literally every single bit of knowledge, skill, you name it, is gone. Wouldn't all of us be emitting chronotons because we're out of place and time? Technically, yes. Okay, I am beginning to form plan Hug the Enemy. Just don't eat their food. <laughs> yeah, eat one set of mushy worms and all you just hear about it for the rest of time wait a minute actually that may not be a bad idea what if temporal worms? trans no operation hug of the enemy if temporal transporters actually pulled us out of our specific places in time and assuming you know, if I still recall my temple mechanics correctly that obviously chronotons are heavily involved in most forms of time travel then the patterns that we have on record from these temporal transporters may actually be used to effectively disrupt Iconian biology. Uh, what is the easiest material in bulk to transport to us through time? Is that a question you're asking me as a GM as part of your uh, I I'm asking Morgan. Okay. Because if we can find some inert matter, um, some some sp stellar dust that is particularly easy to transport through time, I want to get the stuff from the earliest we can, from before the Iconians were a civilization, and have that disrupt their brains. 
if needed. I feel like this is a question I would in character know mm -hmm. because of my focuses, but I'm actually not quite sure. Like off the top of my head, it's a spitball tech. Yeah, so we'll just say for sake of argument, and I'm going to count this as, as a question. Um, let's just say you know of, say, Substance XJ635. Um, and it is basically a stellar core fragment type uh, material. It's not quite neutronium, but it's getting there. Uh, but yeah, it uh, if you bombard it with chronotons long enough, it could do what you're thinking of doing. So, I'll, I'll, this is probably going to take up our second question, but with Substix, with this uh, magical Technobabble substance, mm -hmm. what if we actually, if it's not quite Neutronium, but with the Adventures of the Agonia that we had in Andromeda, what if we have... What if we bombarded it with the same type of radiation that we did with Andromeda with Andromeda? I would say you would have to get a sample of the substance and find out. You have that, no idea at the moment. That is wonderful, and I would love to take that task. All right. I love it. We're going to call it Prototronium. That's what it's called now. Morgantronium. <laughs> All right. Uh, so you have two more questions, and then we'll go to our break. So what are your remaining two questions if you want to use them? I would like to start devising a... Um, so a Skull is the, the, the second most experienced with tactical combat. Is that correct? Seemingly. Okay. So I would like to take this information about... Um, the portals that these smaller vessels use to try to attack us when we're unexpecting it. And I would like to devise a strategy wherein we per we use our chronoton sensors and fire back through them um, before we, are, we ourselves are hit. And so I would like to try and create an advantage of some kind during that combat. Okay. Uh, I would say that'll just use up one of your quote-unquote free questions. So the reason I want an advantage, like mechanically, mm -hmm. is I have the Grand Kai Order of Tactics. Once per mission, when the character creates an advantage that represents some strategy or tactic, they automatically create a second identical advantage. Mm. Well, it's a good thing that your character can do that. What would be your identical advantage? Oh, I was just think thinking like whatever the advantage is, it's just the it's the same one, right? So. Either it makes us much more difficult to hit with their attacks mm -hmm. by a factor of two, or by increasing it by twice, two, not doubling, or it makes it easier for us to attack them when we do it um, through their own portals. I don't, I don't know what the adjudication for that would be. Uh, I'll think about it during break. Um, but I tell you what. And then, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh no, I was just that's something I wanted to work on with Skull. Okay. Um, but I tell you what, uh, let's go ahead and let's take our 10 minute break here. And when we get back from the break, uh, we will handle uh, as many extended tasks as we can quickly cram in. Uh, we'll do some Starship Combat and we'll see where that puts us. So yeah, uh, if you guys could be back at uh, my time would be about uh, 8.53, 8.54. Uh, and yeah, I'm going to mute the stream so that the stream does not hear you guys. But uh, that also means I won't hear you guys. So if you need me, uh, you're going to have to ping me in private. But yeah, let's, uh, let's take a 10 minute break.
All right, I'm unmuted for the stream only at the moment, so hopefully you guys are having a good time with this crossover. It's going quite well. I was a little bit worried, but uh, players are being awesome as per usual. Uh, if this is your first time uh, experiencing one of my streams, welcome. Glad you decided to tune in. I usually run uh, three games during the week. The first is, uh, was, I should say, uh, Star Trek Adventures Ophion. Uh, they are now the Almathea. And that is a Jupiter-class vessel in 2385. Uh, that is run every Saturday at 2.15 p.m. Eastern. The other game is Star Trek Adventures Arcadia. That runs every other Saturday at 3.15 p.m. or every other Sunday at 3.15 p.m. And then there is the Adiona Group. Uh, that runs every other Tuesday at 8 p.m. Now, uh, sometime in the next couple months, the Arcadia Group uh, will wrap up their campaign and they will be on a NX-class ship in the Enterprise era. Uh, we're still a few, mo a few months out on that, but uh, I think it'll be a good time and I'll do announcements then. Uh, the Adiona Group just had its, uh, its quote-unquote Season 2 opener uh, this last Tuesday. Uh, if you're interested in that, you can find it on my YouTube. And I think the Twitch still has the VOD. Um, but other than that, again, just sort of thank you for watching. Uh, what's going to happen now is I'm going to now mute the stream completely uh, because I want to hear what everybody else is saying. Uh, but if I come back from break and you guys on stream can't hear me, blow up my messages so I can fix that. Uh, but yeah, you guys should be in silence for the next five or so minutes. All right, BRB stream.
Alright, we're back on the stream. We've got another 30 seconds to kill. Uh, but if everyone's here, you know, let's just go ahead and get started. There's enough people here. Alright, so, uh, I'm gonna leave the bridge noise on. I, I think it adds ambience. Uh, so, at this point, we will say that uh, some extended tasks are going to go on. And the first uh, extended task is I'm going to need someone to roll for high long. And I'm going to need to have someone roll for uh, Locke. Well, Locke, you roll yourself. Um, so Locke and Hylong are going to be working on the Chronoton sensors. Uh, Sfarja is going to be working on Chronoton weapons with Havoc. And then I think those were the two big extended tasks. Am I missing anything? Yeah, you're missing Pinnek telling the bridge crew again faster. Okay. <laughs> Uh, we're also doing, I suppose, Morgan's extended test with, uh, his, uh, Morganite substance and testing oh. it with Chronoton and Andromeda Ring. Okay, so, uh, let's do those three. Uh, you know what, let's do Morgan, let's do you first, because it should be pretty easy. So, we'll put you on screen. Uh, Morgan, uh, your work track here is going to be an 8, the default difficulty will be a 3, and the magnitude will be a 2. Uh, no resistance, and the default task for this is going to be either a reason or a control plus science. Yeah, we're going to roll with control plus science. Okay. So default difficulty is a three? Uh, default difficulty is a three, yes. And you do have three momentum at the moment, uh, and I would say actually the ship could assist you with computers and science. That's slick. Um, I I think I'm going to uh, spend this momentum since I suppose I'm working on this myself, and okay. I don't really have anybody assisting me at the moment. So if nobody objects, I'm going to be selfish and take what I can get. Okay. So how many momentum are you taking? I'll just spend two. Spend Actually, two. I'll spend one. I'll spend, spend one. one. Okay. So you'll be rolling three die here. All right, uh, that gives you two successes. If someone can do computers and science for the ship, might get you the three you need. I'll roll for the ship. Go for it. And look at that. So yeah, Morgan, not only uh, are you able to find uh, either by uh, some creative use of transporter technology or because they had it on board, you're able to find a uh, sample of this uh, prototronium substance and begin bombarding it with energy. So if you now want to roll me six challenge die to represent the work done. All right. Uh, would you like to re-roll those zeros? You would have to spend I, momentum. I, uh, I would. All right. How many zeros am I re-rolling here? Mm, looks like four. I don't do extended tests very often, so I'm just rolling control science again, correct? Uh, or... No, you're just re-rolling uh, no. four challenge die. Oh, just four challenge die, got Yep. Alright, so, uh, yeah, so you get three work done, which is good. You're at three out of eight work done. Bad news is, uh, this is taking a while. Uh, the substance is not reacting as you thought it would and you're having problems getting it to really respond to any kind of Andromeda-style radiation. Um, chronotons, it works fine for, but the Andromeda-style radiation doesn't seem to be having any effect. So my question is, would you continue working on this, or would you shift your focus elsewhere? I think I'd tr attempt to continue working on this. I want to try to crack this code. All right, you may roll another control science, and the ship can roll another computer science, and it's the same difficulty. All right, so that gets you a momentum. Very good. Who's going to be the lovely, cool kid to take care of the ship? Or I could do that, I suppose. I mean, I believe in Nalan. Nalan got you a success. Uh, same as before, computers and science? Yep. Hey, look at that. You get your... All the momentum you spent has come back. 
All right, uh, so yeah, roll me six challenge die once more, Morgan. And uh, if you get above a five, you win. Okay, you got a two. Do you want to spend momentum to reroll those zeros? <laughs> I do. All right. Notice that the momentum was already spent before he answered. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm sorry, I'm even only four zeros here, right? Yep. All right, well, I'm going to be nice and uh, give it to you this one because you're at seven out of eight work done. Uh, yeah, you find, uh, which is probably more useful for you in the Andromeda Galaxy than it is for, say, this session, um, but you do find that this prototronium substance is not only similar in nature to neutronium and that it's a, a very nice thing to build your ship out of, um, but it is lacking some of neutronium's, shall we say, difficulties, as in uh, not being able to beam in or out, uh, not being able to read past the surface. Um, you basically find a treasure trove of information about this theoretical substance uh, that is on, that you have a substance of. But in terms of for this session, your best bet is that if you were to say take a baseball chunk size of this prototronium and hit an, a, a, and you hit an Iconian with it, it would disrupt their neural passageways. I see. So it's probably best for me to take this information to our, to the our uh, our security and our 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 admiral cannot talk today. Jeez. I'm I'm gonna relay my information. Okay. So uh, while you're doing that, we're going to cut to Locke and Hylong. Uh So you two, based on your knowledge of uh, chronoton sensors are more or less jury rigging, uh, best you can, a similar solution here. So, uh, Locke, would you prefer to take the lead, or would someone like to take the lead as Hylong? Um, I'll roll for Hylong, but I'll, I mean, I'll assist? It's, uh, the quarantine sensors are uh, Hylong's baby, so she should probably take over. Uh, you know what? And she has a focus in sensor modification, so that will probably work. All right. So, uh, both of uh, Hylong and Locke, you guys are going to be rolling a, let's say, a daring and engineering, or a daring and science. And the default difficulty for this extended task is a four. All right. Um, all right, so I will do uh, daring and science for... Um... Uh, Definitely not my strong suit. Um, and the uh, the focus I talked about, sensor modification. Oh yeah, most work. definitely applies here. I mean, either that or she has quantum mechanics too. So also would apply. Gadgeteering, since I'm jury rigging something. Yeah, gadgeteering would definitely apply here. Wow, she pretty much her focuses are suited exactly for this this check. That's <laughs> what she does best. Helps when your science officer is not a spy. Alright, so I see a total of four successes at the moment. Let's see. Uh, so, uh, I'm going to say that you guys could succeed at cost, but I would take two threat for it. Uh, I am okay with you having two threat. Anybody have any objections? Once, twice, no. Alright, cool. So, yeah, that sounds good. Alright, so now, Hylong, you're going to roll me six challenge die, please. Holy crap, I can't roll challenge dice because somebody's token's over. Uh, yeah. Uh, is there another macro to do challenge dice? Because I, for some reason, do not have it on my screen. Uh, should be in your bar. If you go to the macro, uh, what tab is that? The collection tab. And if you put challenge dice in your bar, it should show up. Gotcha. Okay, that's what it is. My bad for taking too long. No, you're fine. All right, so seven work done. Uh, nice. Does does High Long have anything for extended tasks that would say give you vicious one? Um, sh she does not. She has one that I was going to use on the next roll, testing a theory. Mm -hmm. But uh, but that's when you attempt a task using engineering or science. But you have to have already made that same task, so I couldn't use it on the first one. I can only use it on the second one. 
All right. Well, in that case, uh, the good news is, is you definitely succeed. You achieve a breakthrough, and you have the rudimentary uh, operating okay. state of a chronoton sensor array. Uh, you just have the one for the moment, but uh, if you make another two breakthroughs, you can do the entire ship has chronoton sensors. So it's another daring science from each of you, and this time it is a difficulty three. And yes, what is up, Crowley? Uh, how long only has four, uh, three talents? Someone should give her a fourth talent then. <laughs> um, how about we do uh, in the nick of time the one that works for extended tasks? All right, I, and I believe that's the one that gives her vicious. So that would be a grand total of eleven work. Uh, yeah, I take that back. You have two thirds of the ship uh, done with the uh, chronoton sensor array. Uh, thanks for joining, Bren. If you got about, that's all right. Yeah, uh, so I guess. So uh, yeah, if uh, you make another one work done, you succeed on this. So yeah, I need a daring science from High Long and a daring science from Locke, please. Difficulty is a three at the moment. Okay, and being I've already made the same uh, engineering or science check, I get a free D20. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, this doesn't involve programming or study of a computer system, correct? It does not. Okay, and then, oh yeah, and interrogation absolutely doesn't. No. So. I want to see you try that. She'll interrogate the sensors until they do <laughs> exactly. what she wants. <laughs> Uh, Tell me what I want to know. Oof. Oh, and there we go. Very nice. You guys get a momentum. So roll me six challenge die, and all I literally need to see is one. All right. Nothing but zero. <laughs> big numbers, big numbers, no whammies, no whammies. Stop. That That is that is more... High Long literally could probably take a nap, show up three hours later, and do all of this in 30 minutes. Like, it is amazing how quick she is at jury rigging up a prototype chronoton sensor it, it it's it's astounding um but yeah you guys now have the chronoton sensors talent uh which in terms of this game means that uh if you guys spend a power you can negate the quote-unquote surprise tar uh, surprise turn that any shall we say portaling ships would provide and yeah, um, for sake of time, I'm just going to say that Sparja is only able to rig up three Chronoton Warheads. So you have three uh, what are essentially Quantum Torpedoes uh, that are Chronoton based, and we're just going to have to keep track of that. Um, but yeah, with everybody's project, I think, handled, are we good to cut to the bridge? I'm ready. Okay, not hearing any objections, so let's cut to the bridge. All right, so the neck stands. Admiral on deck. I look around. I'm like, oh, that's me. Um, or maybe you, Tahan. As you were. <laughs> oh, might have to start being more specific. Sorry, I, I forgot something very important. Uh, as you all walk in from the other door, the other side of the door. In walks Captain Nalan. Okay, so what do I know personally as Nalan about what's happened so far? Well, uh, you were having a nice cup of coffee. Uh, you were just going over some reports back on your ship. Next thing you know, you were transported to what you have been told is the year 2410. And a crewman has told you that all of your answers lie on the bridge. And here you are at the bridge. He kind of gives a quick glance around, just like, what's going on here? Uh, Beckett chimes in before anybody else can and says, We don't know. We were waiting for you to show up to tell us. <laughs> Did you bring the beer? No, on. Uh, Captain, is it now? Yes, and we're Admiral. Hmm. Huh. We're all from different times, but uh, you might be a little late to the party, but it's good to see you. Um, it's good to see you as well. And we are gone. I'll go ahead and uh, move to a spot that's not right in front of the. Yeah. 
So just uh, just for my token's sake, uh, Tahan, you are taking the main chair, yeah? Yep. Okay. Uh, Panek, let's put you over here next. Well, let's say Bryn is sitting in sick bay since he had to drop out, because that gives us more room on the bridge. Uh, Captain Beckett, you can chill there, and I believe that leaves Scald. You can sit over here next to Panek. Cool. We're all Hi, buddy. set. Um, real quick, just for joke's sake, mm -hmm. uh, Sparja leans over to Beckett, hands him three strips of platinum, and says, you were right. Panek was going to jump in the big chair before anybody else could sit in it. Oh. Uh, I think I should have got it on that bet, too. But, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we are now actually going to start Starship Combat, and I'm hoping uh, it will go pretty quickly. Um... Basically, what we're going to do is I'm limiting you guys to five actions. Um, I'm not really going to take too much into account whether or not you do, like, five tactical actions. Because um, for this, I'm just trying to get us as quickly as possible through this without having to resort to fleet combat rules. Because, as I've learned, everyone here hates fleet, fleet combat rules. For good reason. Um, so before we actually, you know, start doing turn order and all that... Where would you guys like to park the Avenger? Where would you guys like to start? <laughs> right there. <laughs> so, right about here at, uh, I believe that's L6? Sure. We'll go. With um, that. maybe a little bit more space just for, uh, our attempts at negotiation before violence ensues. Okay. These are the negotiations. That's what we named the torpedoes. <laughs> well... So where would you so where would you like to be? And just remember that uh, one to two units is close range, and you do have cannons. Uh, you also have a array, which is two to six, and then anything like seven to ten would be your optimal torpedo range. So maybe about here would be good. Yeah, I think that's okay. Cool. So before, you know, we start doing initiative, is there any hails you want to make? Any last minute orders? Things of that nature. Um, uh, Nalan, oh, Nalan would actually like to put out a hail. Alright. So yeah, you, uh, you open a channel. Iconian Tips. This is Captain Nalan of the USS Nightingale. We don't want violence here. If you want to talk with us, we're willing to talk. And then I close the channel. All right. So channel closes. A few people Captain, look. Oh, go ahead. I believe it is standard procedure to identify the ship you are currently commanding. This is the USS Avenger. Well, I'm not exactly the one in command, but... And I'll just open a hailing frequency with the it's, same message. And the fine. ship name corrected. <laughs> Uh, uh, well, negotiating probably, from a position of strength, then. Yeah. Uh, probably to no one's surprise, the Iconians do not answer. Well, they answer by charging their weapons and moving towards you. So, uh, like I said, we're gonna sort of streamline combat a little bit here. Now, there's a lot of you, but just keep in mind that you guys only get five actions during this turn. Um, so. You need to be very careful about your action economy, what you're doing. Um, so for the moment, I'm just going to put the closest three ships into combat, and we'll decide what to do from there. So you guys have the very first move, so what would you like to do? I uh, Do you have a question? I might have an answer. Am I able to do direct task by chance? I will say that you can do a direct task, yes. Okay, I have crisis management, which means I can direct two people to do stuff. No, nope. it Okay. D crisis management is you can use the direct task twice in one scene, not you can do two people at once. I thought uh, I messaged you about that. I thought I messaged you about that to clear it up. Mm, if you can tell me what page it's on, I'll look it up. If not, no, I looked I'll it up uh, a few minutes, a uh, couple days ago for my new character, and it is direct action twice per scene. W okay. If you spend your determination, okay. you get uh, direct task twice per scene. Okay. That's still really good. It's still good, yeah. Um, so I'm not saying I'm taking my turn to do this, but my my general orders as the commanding officer right now 
are to start taking out the smallest ships so that we are under less fire. That's just my general orders. Will we be keeping the initiative? I believe Svarja has quick to action. Nope! Well, I don't think anyone has quick to action then. So you would have to spend the two momentum. Uh, Connect, um, Connect doesn't have well, it anymore? I can I can get around that. I don't think yeah, Protect never had it. Oh I thought I thought you did. That's part of the reason I got rid of it on Drake was because there was like four of us that had it. Nah, it was nope. I was Shatsu that had it. Oh okay. although thanks for reminding me because don't I look I lose my XO talent now, right? Yup. You get the captain talent now. But more to the point, what would you guys like to do? So I can get around that if we need to go twice in a row. Um I can spend my action to assist a player, and then we can retain the initiative for zero momentum whenever I do that. Huh. Can I do yeah. a quick scan? So, uh, yeah, what's up? Uh, oh, I'd like to do a quick... Would it be an action to do a scan of the ast Of the asteroids? Uh, yes, I would say it would take up in action to do so. Not worth it, then. Okay. Um... But if you give me a momentum, I could answer a free question about it. Done. What are the asteroids made of? And how, and how dense are they? They are made out of a nickel-chromium alloy that could be suitable if used by a tractor beam to, say, flung into other ships. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. Skull's going to run a quick calculation on his computer. Svarja, if we're able to detonate a quantum torpedo in this area roughly around here roughly around here perhaps we would be able to cause the asteroid belts to destabilize with enough force to either disrupt or destroy one of the Iconians. It's a noble, quite a, a novel concept there. I yeah, I think it'll work. Uh, Admiral, what are your orders? Shall we try it? Fire it will. All right, so someone is going to have to roll for Sparja because I don't want that on my right. hands. I got her up. All right, so this is going to be a difficulty three, control plus weapons, and the ship is assisting with weapons and security, and the difficulty here is a three. Um, and if the ship assists, someone else can't as, as well, correct? Uh, I believe the limit is that another person can assist. It's just that you can't add additional dice onto your assist. Like, you can't spend momentum as an assistant to get your additional die, if that makes any sense. Okay, so, um, I could then have Beckett assist her using doctor's orders. Mm -hmm. And the ship can assist her, obviously, because the ship is the one's weapons that are being used. Mm -hmm. uh, that is something I can do? Yeah. Cool. Um, then Beckett uh, will tell Sparja, you heard the Admiral, clear his skies. All right. Um, and we've got... Ooh, the control is terrible. Uh Two D twenty, applicable focus, shipboard tactical systems. I'm sure applies. Mm -hmm. um, and for this, I'll spend a momentum to make this actually work. Okay. Oh crap! Cancel. Well, that's awesome. Okay, so that complication could matter, but let's see what the ship gets you, because you could get momentum from the ship, and then Beckett. Beckett could get you momentum, too. Uh, uh, weapon security for the ship? Correct. Very nice. And, and then, then Beckett, nice. let's see what you roll. Um, and uh, it, it would be a presence in medicine. Mm -hmm. Is that two momentum right there? Yeah, which you could use to get rid of that complication. 
Um, and uh, applicable focus for Beckett, inspiration. Sure. It's almost like I built these characters to work together. <laughs> All right, so you have uh, a total of three momentum uh, gained from this. You could spend two of that to get rid of the complication. If I wasn't muted. Um, I will say yes, because at this point we're still gaining one. I'm still getting the momentum I spent back. Very good. In that case, uh, I need you guys, well, anyone who feels lucky, really, um, I need you to roll me eight challenge die. I'm feeling lucky. All right. I was so going to say ahead. anybody but anybody but Panek. He has a really bad habit of rolling bad on challenge dice. Well, you say that. So... Son of a... Yeah. Is this still the rail the realm where we can reroll zeros for Yes. A, you for one? can spend a momentum to reroll those zeros. And can because I just roll dice to counteract that bad karma there. Yeah, go ahead, Panek. Uh, I believe you would be rerolling five zeros, so five challenge die. Okay, so let's do some math here. Uh, so that it is four. Uh, I count 10 because quantums have vicious one on them. Yes? Yes. All right. So uh, the way this is going to work is I'm now going to roll uh, basically three checks for the three vessels that this explosion of asteroids uh, being flung into them if they respond in time. So let's do the two frigates first. Uh, frigate one does. Frigate two does. And the cruiser, oh, wow, okay, that's, yeah, all right. So they're only going to be taking half that damage, which is 10 rounded down. So these guys are going to be taking about three, and the cruiser just doesn't care. So narratively, you shoot out a quantum, it flies into the asteroid belt, uh, it sends a cascading uh, series of rocks across the immediate area, and some slam into the Iconian frigates, a few slam into the Iconian cruiser, but doesn't really seem to have great effect. And that is going to be your one action. Uh, moving next is going to be the Iconian frigate to the north. Uh, it is basically going to shoot at you point blank. Well, not point blank, but you know what I mean. Uh, let's see, so it is within range, so you guys are going to be taking, uh, before resistance, 8 damage. So, I believe you are scale 4? Did I make you scale 4 or scale 5? Scale 4. Alright, so you would be taking, well, you also have quantum shield, so your resistance 5, so you would be taking 3 damage to your shields. So not bad, all things considered. I think we just take that, um, well, two power for three shields. I mean, that's your call. Uh, I'm going to leave that up to whoever's at that button. Who is at that button? Uh, well, it's Sparja, that's why I kind of say it's, it's up to the players for you guys to decide. Oh, I didn't realize that was up to her. Um... What are we at power-wise on this little... Ah, you've got 16 power at the moment. You're at full power. 16? Holy hell. Uh, yeah, we'll we'll spend... Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. We'll so do that. You're going to spend two power, take you down to 14. And yeah, you completely nullify the first shot. Doesn't even bother you. Uh, but then the next Iconian frigate's going to go, because I'm going to spend some threat to retain some, the initiative. So the Iconian Frigate number two, going to open fire on you. And yeah, I actually get a point of threat back. Uh, but it does nothing. Like, it doesn't even get past your initial resistance. So it fires at you, and it just sort of peters across your shields. It's actually kind of comical. And it is now your guys' turn again. Yeah, I'm, I'm adjusting it for the stream here in a moment. One second. There we go. Um, would you consider the two frigates two distance from each other or three? Uh, I would say they are two from one another. Checking the rules for, uh, charge attacks. 
Uh, well, uh, if I recall properly, um, if you use your arrays, your uh, anti-proton arrays, uh, you can do the area uh, effect on them, which would apply here because they are within two units of each other, so they are within close range. Okay, uh, I think I'll use my turn. Um, and I want to go and assist um, whoever is at tactical um, using the, our, um, our double advantage. Mm -hmm. And because I'm assisting, it'll be zero initiative or zero momentum to keep the initiative. Okay. It, this, double, this would take up two of our turns, though, to do it this way. Yeah, but. Do it. But you get a reroll and um, and an extra assist on the die. All right. Well. Okay. Let's do it. So yeah, awesome. Sparja, if you want to roll your uh, control security again, difficulty here is three. Captain's assisting you with presence command. Ship's assisting you with weapons security. Is that taking into the too easier into account? Difficulty's a one. It's not a three. What am I saying? Uh, well, if it's if it's three normally, I think then I think we're okay to try to hit that without the advantage. Uh, up to you. So <clears throat> let's save it for the okay. big boy. All right. Uh, uh. Okay. One from the Avenger. Good job there. One's from Sarja. Hey, look at that. You get a momentum. All right, so Sfarja, you're going to roll me the... Uh, what do you have for your uh, anti-protons here? I believe that is seven? Yes, so you are rolling me seven challenge dice, please. Okay. All right, do you want to spend any momentum on piercing or to re-roll those two zeros? Uh... Piercing gets rid of resistance, correct? It will get rid of two resistance for every point of momentum you give me. Um, let's just do... Um, yeah, I'll spend one momentum for uh, piercing. Okay. And because you rolled an effect, that does mean it affects both frigates. And sure enough, these guys are scale two. So they go poof. Uh, so again, narratively what happens is Sfarja, under the careful tactical uh, advisement of uh, Rear Admiral Tahan, lines up her shot, aims the array in sort of a wide beam so that it impacts both ships at the same time, and they become what are essentially chunks of debris in space. So the frigates are down. And that is going to make it the cruiser's turn. So, since the cruiser's more or less going to get to go twice here, uh, the cruiser for its first action is going to line up here, and then, oh, no, here, and is going to fire a, a uh, what do they have? They have a, ah, they have transphasic torpedoes. I knew I had it somewhere. So, let's see how it does. Uh, well, they do quite well. Uh, the somewhat bad news is that they have piercing two on their transphasic torpedoes. So your resistance is three, which I still think that means you only take two, I think. Yeah, you would only take two damage if I can math properly. That doesn't sound too terrible. Well, it would, and then I'm just going to spend two threat to... Roll, re-roll those zeros. Okay, so now you're taking four. Uh, um, I don't, I don't think I want to spend the power, the shields. Okay. I'll just tank those four shots. All right. So, uh, technically, it is uh your guys' turn again. And uh, um, at this point, um, uh, Locke, uh, really Locke, Hylong, whichever sciencey person wants to do it, really. Uh, I'd like you to roll me a reason and science uh, 
assisted by the ship's sensor science at a difficulty of two. And this is not counting for your action. This sounds like my gem. Mm-hmm. Um, any of my focuses apply? Like, uh... Uh, I would say one of your focuses does apply, but I don't want to say which one. The targeted scans? Targeted scans for sure. Wow. Just wow. Alright, well, uh, Locke, not only do you get two momentum, you detect that over here, to what is essentially the right side of the screen, uh, a series of Defiant classes have dropped out of warp and have begun to distract and harry the Iconian vessels over there. Uh, apparently I put these on the wrong layer. But just imagine as I get those tokens ready that there's some Defiant classes causing hell over there. Captain, we have backup. I, I mean, captains. I mean, every... Noted. Thank you. Uh, GM question. Yeah, what's up? As a commanding officer, I can use the rally action, correct? Mm-hmm. Um, would any momentum that would go over our six cap, would that be able to be used to restore shields and power, or no? Uh, that would have to be done during a restore power or a st restore shields action. Gotcha. Um, you can't just, like, say hey, I'm firing weapons, but I'm also restoring power. Yeah, it, it has to be specifically during the restore actions. Gotcha. Okay. I'll zoom out here a little bit so the stream can see what's going on on the other side of the screen. Let's see if I can... Yep, there we go. Alright. So yeah, uh, technically it is your guys' turn again. Uh, at this point there's a, there's a heated battle going on over here, but it is now your guys' turn. I would like to direct uh, Janus to take evasive maneuvers. maneuvers. Alright, Janus, you heard the man. Let's do some evasive maneuvers. Understood. So, uh, Janus, you're going to roll me a daring and con, and someone's going to do the ship structure and con. And I'll do the shield. Alright, the difficulty overall is only a one. And I have evasive action. Yep. Jeez. <laughs> wow. So uh, you get two momentum, which is great. And yeah, if I remember evasive action properly, that basically means that you don't take the negative to attacks, yeah? Or am I thinking of a different talent? No, I think evasive action is that. That's in the command book. I have the operations open. Eh, while we're figuring that out, the Iconian cruiser is going to shoot at you again. Obviously at a higher difficulty. And uh, the good news is, uh, yeah, it missed. Or it would, if I didn't spend some threat. So, uh, you guys are going to get slammed by a torpedo. And by slammed, I mean it has one, two, three, four... Eight piercing, so all your resistance nullified. And that means you guys are going to take uh, 10 shield worth of damage. And I believe that leaves you with no shields. Is that about right? Can we do that double thing with the shields? You can indeed. It would cost two power, but you can indeed. Uh, yeah, Sparsha is definitely hitting that button. Okay. What about the what about the spin four power button? You could spend the four power button. That is an option. Um, sounds like a plan. All right. So if you spend the four power button, uh, you would only take, I believe, six of that. But six is still enough for a breach. Actually, two breaches because it has high yield. So let's see where you got hit. Uh, structure, which is fun. And engines also fun. Alright, so uh, sort of good news, bad news here. Uh, when structure is hit, I get to roll an effect, and or a challenge die, and if I roll an effect, uh, one of you is fatally injured. One of you is not fatally injured. Congrats. 
Uh, as far as expense engines, for three robot. Ah, <laughs> uh, you know what? You said it, so I'm going to. Wait, Crowley. Sorry, uh, you you did it, but... <laughs> Uh, the other news, uh, is that when your engines are hit, uh, you lose two power immediately. And Wait. anything that requires a, uh, engine task or has a power requirement increases in difficulty by one until someone, uh, performs the restore minor action. So you could potentially have Havoc do some sort of restore action. So, sorry, I wasn't following the math. Um, yes. Did they hit even after Janice's evasive actions? Yes. Okay, cool. Yeah, I, I basically I mean, dumped all my threat on this one attack. I have literally one threat left to my name. Always got to get in one good hit. But yeah, um, yeah, it is your guys' turn. So what would you like to do? Uh, I would recommend the engineers get to you know, doing their stuff. Babble your techno. All right. So, Havoc, uh, there's two ways you can go about this. Um, you can either perform a restore minor action and then another restore action, like an actual, like, restore power or restore shields. You just have to tell me which it is that you're doing. I'll... Uh, which one do we want to have first, first of all? Well, right do now we... you're sitting at about three shields and seven power. I'm all uh, for shields, personally. Yeah, shields first. Okay. We don't want to take another one of those hits. All right, so you are going to spend one power here, and I need you, Havoc, to roll me a control engineering. The ship is going to assist with structure engineering. And you regain two points of shields if you succeed. It is only a difficulty one, and another two moment, or it's two more shields for every one momentum. So and let's do, let's do those I get a focus first. on this? You... you do get a focus, yes. And can Xenixia assist? Xenixia can definitely assist on this, but it doesn't matter because Havoc did not roll uh, any successes. Uh, you could spend your determination to re-roll. You know what? Screw it. I do that. Okay. What value would you be calling into play here, just out of curiosity? I can fix any ship faster than anyone can break it. Alright, sure. Go ahead and re-roll your, uh, your two dice there, and let's see at least one success. And structure engineering for the ship, you said? Yep. Oh boy. Very nice. So you guys are sitting at three extra momentum, four extra momentum. Am I safe to assume and you want to push dice board? for my uh, oh, for your, determination for pack? Your veteran, yep. Uh, but would I be I safe in assuming that those four floating momentum you guys are going to put back into shields? I'd say so. That seems say logical. So. Yeah. Okay. I do not see the challenge dice button. So uh, you point. have to go under collections and put it in your bar. Um. But the good news is you guys were at uh, three shields. You're now at, I can math today, 13. Or whatever your maximum would be if it's... Hey, I got back. Uh, we were at three, but we had four. Okay. Had it back, right? So we should be at seven then. Well, okay. right. Well, so, okay. So there were four floating momentum, and Ooh. it's two shields per momentum. So that's eight. Oh, okay. And then it's two because he succeeded the task, so it's it's ten overall. Right. So we're back to full then. Yeah, you're back and to full. My determination is back because I managed to roll well. Uh, don't you need an effect for that? I'm pretty oh, sure. Oh, it was just a one. I thought sure. it. I yeah. thought that was. Dang, I don't get it back. Dang. All right. So uh, we're just going to at this point uh, say it is your guys' turn again. Um, it is up to you how you want to respond to the Cyconian cruiser. Uh, on the other side of the world from you guys, uh, the fight is going well. Uh, the frigates have been wiped out, but the uh, cruiser is having, shall we say, fun uh, gutting Defiance. One of the Defiance is listing in space. Uh, another good hit, and it's it's done so. Uh, Do I see the Defiance... registration? Oops, say again. Do I see the name of the Defiance? Uh, you do. 
And one of them does happen to be uh, your pride and joy. How far can we beam? <laughs> uh, well, uh, you would have to get within at least, I would say, ten units to beam from them. And the torchbearer is the one that has the wrench. No. <laughs> I... So, okay. you guys tell me, what would you like to do? Uh, We've got one more spot left. Well, let's just say that I'm not really tracking turns at this point. It's pretty much just you and the Iconian cruiser. So, it just goes back and forth. Who hasn't gone yet? Yeah, who hasn't gone and would like to? Uh, Pinek hasn't gone, but what are your suggestions? Like, what are we... Taking this cruiser out is going to be our biggest obstacle here to get to the beacon. I could scan for weakness, and that would help her uh, attack. Push All it into the beacon. Ooh, there you go. Push it into the beacon. There's an idea. All we have left is a command spot. Uh, don't worry about, you know, how many things you've got left. Don't worry about this. Right. We're, we're doing well, uh, extremely simplified combat here. Yeah, I guess pushing, we could reverse the tractor beam polarity. It's got. It looks like it's got a lot of mass, but what do you think? I think that's the kind of unorthodox thinking that is why Tivna brought you along. So, do it. Mr. Locke. I want you to invert the polarity of the tractor beam. Bring us into closer to that cruiser and give it a nudge into that beacon. Aye, Captain. All right. So, uh, the way this is going to work is uh, I'm going to have Janice. Let's have you do a roll first uh, because you do need to move for this. Uh, I need you to roll me a control con, and someone needs to roll engines con for the ship. And this will be one power to do this. But if you do spend the one power, you can get in range and continue to do this, no problem. I can do the ship. Okay. How many dice for me roll? Uh, should just be your two. Um, is that six momentum accurate? Yes, the six momentum is accurate at the moment. Ooh, so Janice, do you want to spend your determination... I have a determination that says I am at home behind the wheel. Yes, go ahead and spend it and re-roll those, uh, those 20s. That's control and uh, con, right? Yep. I believe in you. All right, well, you got the one. That's all you need. So the good news is you're able to get to here, no problem via a quick warp jump, so the nacelles flash for a moment, and it's almost like uh, is it the Picard maneuver or the Riker maneuver, where they just sort of flash, and there's a there's a Picard visual maneuver. duplicate. Yeah. Um, and because of the successes you got, you basically turn that momentum you just got into the two you needed to keep the initiative, and at this point, whoever wants the honor of using the tractor beam is going to be rolling me a control security and the ship is assisting with structure security. The difficulty here is a two. I've been rolling oh. bad. I'm not going to touch it. <laughs> um, I rolled oh. well. I can, I can uh, roll. Sure. I was going to say uh, Svarja could do it, but not very. Um, I could use my one security officer I brought with me. His control and security is a fifteen. I mean. That's Not good. Sure yeah. I mean, so, it's either that or Sparja. So yeah, let's let's have Lieutenant Gokmer do this. All right. So Klingon comes running onto the bridge in the thematically appropriate moment. Says, "Oh, sorry, I got caught in the transporter." <laughs> I was gonna say, I don't think you want me to roll again because I got fifteen. Also, sorry, structure plus con for the ship. Correct. Or no, sorry, uh, structure security for the ship. But I think it's the same thing for the for the Avenger. Uh, I'll remind you guys we have six momentum. Yeah, you do have six momentum. That's three extra dice. Um, right, I'll steal someone. one for an extra dice. All right. 
since I was reversing the player, do I be able to assist? You can assist, yes. Uh, let's have you do a control science for your assisting. Um, we'll spend the two momentum to get rid of that complication. Okay. Button didn't want to push. All right, so hey, you get a momentum back. And here's how this is going to work. Uh, there's two ways we can go about this, and this is me gauging for time. Uh, one option is I let you guys literally throw the cruiser into the beacon, destroying it, and you win the encounter and win the adventure, uh, which would let you guys spend the next 17, 20 minutes role-playing as you wish. Or uh, if people are able to stay later, uh, we roll some challenge die to see how much damage the cruiser does slamming into the beacon, and we go from there. So whichever would be your guys' preference at this point. I, I, know, sounds fun. I, I do know people have to start leaving here soon. Uh, yeah, just because people have to leave, I'd, I'd vote for option one. I think we should roll a challenge die just so we could see how much damage it did for curiosity. Otherwise, we'll win. Okay. Let's do that then. I, yeah, I can agree with that. All right. So, uh, let's do it this way. I would like four of you. So, choose amongst yourself which four. Uh, four of you, I want you to each roll five challenge die. Um, I will roll five for Sparja because she's been amazing. So Janice, Janice goes point blank. A lot you should roll. I'll, I'll have Gokmir roll five. Okay. Hmm. All right. Good start. Starts. Sorry, Crowley, what did you say? Morgan should roll the last set. I dig it. Alright, we're up to nine. We're up to two. I I heard Morgan and then everybody cut out for me. Ah, uh, five challenge play. dice if you could. Alright, so that would have been a grand total of 15 damage I'm seeing. Which, uh, considering the beacon shielding, would be more than enough to cause a breach, and therefore destroying the beacon, even if we did it the other way. Good job there. So, narratively, how to describe this happening. You guys jump forward, Picard maneuver, there's the quantum visual duplicate of your ship behind you, and before the Iconians can react, Locke masterfully dances across, his fingers dance across the console, reverses the polarity of the tractor beam, and then, right on cue, a Klingon runs onto the bridge, uh, kind of shoves Far Sparja out of the way. Uh, his fingers go across the console masterfully, and the tractor beam pulses out from the deflector dish and sends the Iconian cruiser uh, cartwheeling into the Iconian beacon, and you see it start to explode and implode, and the entire area surrounding the beacon goes up in a flash of light. Uh, so these guys completely gone and as for the uh, remaining Iconian cruiser uh, before it can get the shot off on the torchbearer the other two defiant classes come swooping in and basically eviscerate the cruiser and at this point you guys have beaten the adventure so uh, Tivna sort of pauses for a moment uh, mouth slightly agape and says Huh. I thought that was going to go completely different. Well, good job, everyone. Good, good, good job. Good, good. Okay, nobody else is clapping. Okay. Crowley will just send a text message to the torchbearer just to ask who the uh, XO is. Uh, the commanding officer is. Uh, so as it turns out, uh, the c commanding officer says spoilers. Ooh. And then the hologram... Dis dissolves and we're all in one room. I have a question. I might have an answer. Were there life forms on these ships? Or were they like drone vessels? Uh, the Iconian vessels? Yes. Uh, they were, uh, and you would have picked this up during your research, uh, they were manned, but they were not manned by Iconians. They were manned by uh, heralds. And heralds are sort of like a subservient species that the Iconians use. 
Okay, so we didn't just commit genocide. Uh, I mean, you do that, that every Thursday, but yeah. Well, we play on Sunday, so that's fine. Uh, yeah. I will work with our former chief engineer. I have a question, Miss Tivna. I might have an answer. Are you by chance a Q? And if so, which Q are you? Well, I claim to be many things, uh, Rear Admiral, but I am not a Q. I think that's for the best. Yes, uh, well, as much as I hate to sort of, you know, shake your hand and kick you out the door, I do have to now start the arduous progress or process of reintegrating all of you into your timelines. Now, so I don't have to say this a thousand times, uh, we'll say Havoc and anyone else who's not here gets clued in on this conversation over the, uh, the loudspeakers. When you get sent back to your times, you will remember all of this. But you are under strict obligations of the Temporal Prime Directive to never reveal anything that you have learned here to anyone else until the events of this time have actually passed. Meaning, you are not allowed to talk about this until 2410. And trust me, if you do, the FTA will know about it. And with that, Tivna's uh, pauses and says, when you're ready, each of you please meet me in the transporter room and I will send you on your way. And then Tivna departs, and you guys are free to RP as long as you've, I've got you. Uh, so before anybody else says anything, I'm just going to say, so who wants to take a small detour to the lounge before going to the transporter? Uh, you're speaking my language. Uh, Admiral Skull, was it? That's correct, and this was Morgan? No, this is Crowley. Oh, Crowley, I apologize. Names, I don't do well with names. No worries, but I'll see you at the lounge. Computer, set aside transport to the lounge. Alright. So, uh, if I understand where this is going, you guys want to squeeze in your Royal Rumble, don't you? Um, I just want a drink first. Ah. Uh, and, and I want Blanc something, it's not a drink, though. I know, you want to steal tech. I know. <laughs> um, there's the lounge. Uh, I'm gonna find Nalan at some point. Sure. Oh, Vir Admiral, hello. Um, I still know you as Counselor. Um, the last time we saw each other wasn't on good terms, unfortunately. It wasn't, yes. I just want you to know that I regret that. Um, I'm glad to see that you're doing well. And I'm glad to see that you're doing well as well, Rear Admiral. And I'm sure you already know, but right now I'm... I've just lost Carruthers, and we're finding him. I'm not going to ask. I know better, but... GM, out of character, would I know if we found him? You would know, but I'm not going to tell you the answer. Fair enough. I... If you have any piece of advice for me, nothing that breaks our directive, before I, but before I go back, what do I need to know? How, how can I fix what happened between us? I guess in reality, that's for you to decide, Rear Admiral. I got over a time after. Uh, counseling work was rough on the ranger station. I learned not to hold grudges. Anything you try would probably work. I look forward to getting that chance. Thank you, Captain. And uh, you, Addies. Rear Admiral. All right, I'll go over to the bar and ask for something green. All right, you'll get something green. Is Havoc here? 
Having, everyone's here. Well, yes, I am here. Yeah, I would say anyone here is uh, on screen is here. Everyone else is transported back to their own time. All right, Crowley's going to go over to Havoc. Okay. Uh, with, um, let's say, scotch in hand. Okay. Walk up to her and I was like, do you drink? A lot. It helped in the, uh, well, it helped in the past. Oh, here you go. I actually don't touch the stuff. I quickly uh, down the drink, though I do uh, pause a little bit to get the taste of it. Good work. Well, at the very least, it's uh, it's probably a fair bit better than what happened in you know what and you know when. Yeah. Now I gotta find that other Borg. I have something to discuss with him. The other Borg. Is it another Borg? I believe there was another person who. Uh, oh, Crowley had the uh, nanites in him. Yeah. He just starts looking around like, is another Borg? I believe he was called Crowley? Yeah, that's me. Oh, right. Hi. Well, that was awkward. But, yeah. But hey. I just got out of uh, near out of an engine that got ruptured, so you can forgive me for being a little tired. <laughs> but <sighs> okay, there's no good way to put this, and no way to make it seem like it's a normal thing. But may I have a bit of a sample of your nanites to go to look at? Uh, kind of attached to them, literally. Yes, but so am I. But that doesn't mean we can't. I can't, you can't give me a sample. You're asking for something very personal. Look, I'll give you some of mine if you want it. High Long shuts from the corner, phrasing! Thank you, High Long. A treat, as always. We're still doing phrasing, right? Right, High Long? We're still doing phrasing? Oh, we're doing phrasing until I die. Gotcha. That happens in 2398, right? Time, time I, travel jokes. You know, I I actually chuckle and just wave my hand and say, you know what, you can keep them, but I do want to know, did you ever get to see what was underneath Andromeda's helmet? Yes. How do you know her? That's something that I have been told never to tell anyone until the mission is over. If you do Don't see worry, her... She's She's not doing anything stupid. She's not gone into any danger, and no, we're not chasing her down. But I just want to ask if there's any feature under the helmet that is most prominent to you, what was it? Her smile. I see. <laughs> All right, so she does have a mouth. You don't have to have a mouth to smile. Oh, that just no. makes me scared. <laughs> if you do see her, please give her my regards. I'm not supposed to talk about what goes on here, but... Oh boy. You know what? <laughs> I'll make an exception and just say... I got a tip from a friend that you helped a while ago... That uh, he thanks you for, for what you did for him, saving his life. Thanks. If you excuse me... Oh. I have another pointy-eared individual to talk to. Before you go, just just to make sure that, uh, that, well, the time police don't come after us, I quickly write down a, uh, bit, a few numbers and stuff like that and hand it to him. Mm -hmm. If you punch that in, you'll be able to find me on the systems if I'm alive during your time period. Okay. Don't talk to me, though. I'm, I was pretty prickly back then. Okay, well, I think I'll do something for you. Nice talking to you. Nice talking to you. Heavy departs. If no one else has anything, I want to talk to Panek. I'll, I'll go after anyone else, though. Yeah, I was going to say, so I, we probably have time for like one or two little quick conversations, and then we got to end. Um, before he gets to me, Panek, with the wistful music in the back... He walks right up to Beckett mm -hmm. and then 
walks past him and orders a Tarkalian tea on sweet. Okay. Replicator provides. That's it. He doesn't talk to Beckett. Okay. As as he walks past me, because uh, I'm I'm not gonna let I'm not gonna let that happen. Uh, as he walks past me with his tea, uh, that fourth pip suits you. Hopefully, uh, Diophion and Lysetia will get to fly together soon. I understand we have a new friend in a high place that could make that happen. Yes, yes, we do, and I'm sure there'll be another crisis. And another war, and another mission in somewhere that nobody's ever been. I look forward to reading your reports from the Andromeda. I'll make sure that they are filed in triplicate as usual. Very good. Right. And then Crowley, last conversation of the night. What do you say to Panek? Just walk up to him and smile. I always love meeting other Vulcans. Just to see the different varieties of reaction they might have towards me. But, Captain Panek, I remember you. I came across your file when I was looking at potential candidates for the Arcadia years ago. Uh, Is that so? You. Yeah, you stood out. Unfortunately, I didn't take you. But, I am glad that my initial hunch about you was correct. Looks like you make a good captain. I hope to grow into the role. Uh, there are some difficulties with my crew. Uh, I tend to be rather strict. Well, I found that being strict will get you to a lot of places. But also having some flexibility every now and then will get you further. It doesn't have to be all the time. But the timing of when you can bend a bit more, that's key. Learn that, and you will go to any star you wish to go to. It's a pleasure working with you. As with you, Captain. And I think that is an excellent note to end on. So, ladies and gentlemen, we come to the end of our crossover special. Uh, to anyone watching on Twitch or YouTube, this is where I'm cutting off the stream. So thank you so much for watching, and thank you for tuning in. But bye-bye.